maybe we'll start uh, irozu i uh, think we'll just have a starting prayer give introduction and to have most of the time then we can question of chapter some after the starting prayer and then we can take it forward from there uh, we will start this session with a word of prayer and then we will we'll take it forward ప్రేమ వెలిగిన తండ్రి పరిశుద్ధమైన దేవా నమ్మకమైన అర్జున వెలిగిన మా స్వామి దయా మమ్మల్ని ఎంత వరకు జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకుని మరొకసారి మ్యారటల్ సెషన్ ని కలిగి ఉండడానికి మాకు ఇచ్చినందుకు మధ్యం కొనాలి దేవా ఈ సెషన్ ని నిర్వహిస్తున్న చర్చి అలాగే సెషన్ లో హోస్ట్ గా ఉండి ఆయన మత ఇన్ఫోర్ చేస్తున్న వసంతానికి జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకోండి ఇసులు కానీ మరి పక్షండి మనస్సులకు సిద్ధపడుతున్న వారికి ఎటువంటి సూచన కావాలి వాటిని ఆల్రెడీ సెషన్ వన్ లో మీరు ఇచ్చారు ఇంకా కంటిన్యూషన్ ఈరోజు మాకు పొందుబోతుందిగా కావాల్సిన అడుగు మీరు అనుగ్రహించండి మన వారి జీవనకరం చేయండి కనుగా సమయానికి రావడానికి సహాయం చేయండి సెషన్ అంతటి నుంచి చెప్పుకుంటూ యేసు క్రీస్తు అశక్తిగా నీ రావాలో మేము స్థితించి కనపరచు ప్రతి వారి రోజు అడు పెట్టుకుందాం మా పరమ తండ్రి అందులో అందులో నాడి థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ వన్స్ అగైన్ ఫర్ యాక్సెప్టింగ్ అవర్ ఇన్విటేషన్ ఐ నో సెషన్ వన్ um we have we were we were blessed by your session and of course we only covered a part of uh, the big topics that we have uh, um i think we had my biblical basis of marriage and how to choose a life partner and finding god's will uh, those are the points and topics that we covered in session 1 and uh, our church accepted uh, for session 2 so uh, we are here and session 2 before we go with the session 2 i'll give a quick intro about uncle and auntie for those who don't know and who joined today and um and we will also i'll also mention about the topics that you that uncle and auntie will be covering today and then we'll directly hand it over to them okay um wasn't my uncle and auntie working in god's kingdom since 1990 with different organizations like uesi intermission scripture union and grace avenue to ministries god gave them this mission Uh, our vision of a family ministry is in the year 1998 since then god is using them mightily in counseling the families and conducting marital and premarital and parenting seminars and couples bible studies the heading repair of broken walls family ministries uh, so far they have done more than 1000 seminars in different parts of the country uh, with different uh, uh, ministries uh, they are part of um, and uh, they are based in hyderabad at the moment they are blessed with uh, two children uh, felix carry and shekina shama and their daughter in law tarika and son in law moses and their grandson uh, aviat i think they are enjoying their married life for the past 33 years this is a very quick intro uh, for those who don't know about masand and kanthante and who will be viewing this session later on because this is being recorded and uh, uh, thanks again uncle and i know uh, you have given us the points that you will be covering in this session and you will also give a quick recap of what you have been what you have covered in the last session and uh, if you if it's okay i'll just tell out uh, what are the sessions or session points that we're going to cover today uh, from what i got from uh, akka it is understanding the differences of man and woman and understanding biblical headship and submission those are the two points i think that you're going to be covering i hope you uncle and auntie please take it over can heaven is um, you are part time portara or the bit will or not people will join maybe anybody is there to sing one song at least uh <laughs> anybody is there no actually <laughs> uncle um olivaka uh, and you i'm putting you on spot but <laughs> navya undika i think they are outside akadi okay okay yeah ent song song ga please sir please సెమినార్ కి యాప్ట్ గా ఉంటది కదా ఐ విల్ సింగ్ నా జీవిత భాగస్వామి నా ప్రియ యేసు స్వామి లిరిక్స్ ఏమన్నా షేర్ చేయగలుగుతావా రవి అదర్వైజ్ నేను చూస్తాను ఓకే వినపడుతుందా ఓకే థ్యాంక్ యూ ఐ ప్రైజ్ గాడ్ ఫర్ దిస్ ఆపర్చునిటీ ఐ విల్ సింగ్ దిస్ సాంగ్ 
నా జీవిత భాగస్వామి నా ప్రియేసు స్వామి నా జీవిత భాగస్వామి ప్రియవరుడాయేసు స్వామి ఏసయ్యా నా స్థుతి పాత్రుడా ఏసయ్యా నా ధననీయుడా ఏసయ్యా నా మహనీయుడా ఏసయ్యా నారాధ్యుడా ఏసయ్యా నా స్థుతి పాత్రుడా ఏసయ్యా ధననీయుడా ఏసయ్యా మహనీయుడా ఏసయ్యా నారాధ్యుడా అరు చేతిలో చెక్కావు నీ శ్వాసతో నింపావు జీవాత్మగనను చేసి సృష్టించావు అరు చేతిలో చెక్కావు నీ శ్వాసతో నింపావు జీవాత్మగనను చేసి సృష్టించావు ప్రతిగా నీకేమేవగలనేసమస్తముతో ఆరాధించును ప్రతిగా నీకేమేవగలనేసమస్తముతో ఆరాధించును స్తుతి పాత్రుడా ఏసయ్యా నా ఘననీయుడా ఏసయ్యా నా మహనీయుడా ఏసయ్యా నారాధ్యుడా అమితముగా ప్రేమించి ప్రాణమునే అర్పించి నీ వధువుగా నన్ను స్వీకరించావు అమితముగా ప్రేమించి ప్రాణమునే అర్పించి నీ వధువుగా నన్ను స్వీకరించావు నీ రుణమేలా తీర్చగలనే నా జీవితముతో ఆరాధింతును నీరు ఇండియా మీటింగ్ ఆస్ట్రేలియా ఓకే ఈరోజు ప్రత్యేకంగా వాట్ టు డీల్ టూ టాపిక్స్ వన్ ఈజ్ ద సైకలాజికల్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ బిట్వీన్ మ్యాన్ అండ్ ఉమెన్ సో ప్రాబ్లం ఎక్కడ వస్తుంది అంటే మెనీ మ్యారేజ్ వాళ్ళు వితౌట్ నోయింగ్ ద డిఫరెన్సెస్ దే ఎంటర్ ఇన్ టు ద మ్యారేజ్ 
so because of their ignorance of these differences they are fighting each other that is the problem so before the marriage only they should know the what's the how god designed the man and the woman uh, with these differences and how these differences will help um the marriage to grow if you don't know these differences it will break the marriage because of the ignorance if you if you know the differences you will celebrate the differences since see the difference if you know them they no, no. uh, if you don't know the these differences you will fight but if you know the differences you will celebrate <laughs> that's why we thought it is a wonderful uh, uh, subject to deal actually there are more than 43 differences between man and woman but why god designed the like this ఎందుకు దేవుడు ఇద్దరిని ఒకలాగా ఒక జెరాక్స్ కాపీ తీసుకోండా ఇద్దరిని డిఫరెంట్ డిఫరెంట్ తేడాలతో పెట్టాడు సో బికాస్ టూ కంప్లీట్లీ టూ డిఫరెంట్ పోల్స్ యాక్చువల్ చెప్పాలంటే టూ డిఫరెంట్ మనకు అనిపిస్తుంది ఎందుకు దేవుడు ఒకే ఒకేసారి లాగి వచ్చు కదా వై క్రియేటెడ్ ఇన్ దీస్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ ఇన్ ద ఎండ్ వీ విల్ షో యూ వై గాడ్ క్రియేటెడ్ దీస్ డిఫరెన్సెస్ ఓకే రైట్ ఓకే what is it yeah we will share our uh, powerpoint so if you miss any pro, um, anything any um point don't worry because last week's uh, message the notes and this week's notes i will send it to um, mercy so sh she will um share it in your group okay right so this is about celebrating our differences celebrating our differences ma powerpoint kanapadtha kada ravi just thambi right very good right right very good okay you you, you just you, you see these two brains the man and woman so woman is complete elavandante complete ga what is that chikku 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 on the human brain anta pada but man's brain is in order okay everything is in order okay so we can big big chupis tham will show you yeah yeah man's brain oh. is in box types like we told yesterday last week yeah yeah, yeah. box type that mm. means they are compartments mm. man has specific compartments for specific things artham mm. endandi den gurinchi than office ante ad oka box vere ga untadi road ante ad oka box vere ga untadi suppose involving in church activities than box vere ga untadi but when you see the woman's brain brain we also involve we go to work we work in the home we uh, we involve in the church but our thinking is all no all jumbled up all together intertwined all intertwined so we so whenever we think of one thing suppose we thinking something about things concern in the home we don't just think it exclusively in context of the home we also link it up with things attached to the church with things attached to the workplace but when you look at the man's brain it is all uh, no boxes type so when he's thinking about the home he's solely thinking about the home he has nothing to do with anything in the church or in the workplace got it so that is the way god wired us it's not that we to we are forming ourselves in that way that is the way god made the man and the woman's brain so that is why we have to remember that this is god made so we don't need to fight over the differences but we need to celebrate those differences and no build our marriage which will bring glory to the lord okay yeah just uh, look at this picture <laughs> how to understand a man this is a full edition but how how to understand a woman is just part one it's just part one only it's just part one only <laughs> so in one of the similar one husband said anna is not just part one in the part one is the section a <laughs> it's a section a <laughs> so of course is a you know, just to understand how god designed man's understand man's of uh, what is it brain and woman's brain okay let's go to the notes again so celebrate the difference celebrate the difference you see the genesis you see the genesis 2 um who is better the man or the woman the answer to that question is yes <laughs> yes for what because both are both are right both are better both are better how a man is infinitely superior to a woman 
at, at being man. And a woman is infinitely superior to a man at being a woman. That means both are equal in the status, but in their um what is that the roles they differ, the responsibilities they differ, but in the in the status they are both are equal in the God side. So God made us different that He might make us one. What is this? <laughs> Making different people, different personal, different minds, and uh, ask them to live together in the marriage. Is it not funny for the, for the, for the world? It's a funny thing, crazy thing. No, that's why the word of God says marriage is a mystery. Mm. How this much, so much differences, mm. God brings two different, no, wired and textures people together mm. and asks them to live together, understand each other, mm. accommodate each other and build a marriage and build a home. That's why it's, it's a mystery. Mm. And about mystery, I say it takes the grace of God to build a marriage mm. so neither is superior to the other mm. but we are very very different mm. man is not superior to woman woman is not so inferior to man mm. we are completely different very very different we are but none of us are superior than the other that we need to keep in mind when we are going to learn about the differences that god has put in a man and a woman so there is no superiority, inferiority is uh, failing here. It's only we are different. We are different. Very, very, very different. These differences are more than mere psychological um, proclivity, proclivities. They are present by divine design. No, no, no. It's, of course, it's there. But it's a divine, more than the psychological thing. It is a divine design. For example, Adam named animals, but he had a certain loneliness about him. He was looking for a mate. He couldn't mate a fight mate in a uh, in, uh, among the animals in any of the creature. But that God made a woman for Adam and presented her to him. And what did Adam say? I like that she is like me. <laughs> of course, it's, uh, but, uh, it's not the same sentence, but we can see what he actually said. Oh, this no. is how, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. That means it is mine. It is mine. It is mine. It's nothing but sense of belongingness. Sense of belongingness. So not only did Adam like Eve because she was like him, he also liked her because she was not like him. What is this sentence? Is it not contradicting? Is it contradicting to each other? Not only Adam, only, uh, only did Adam like Eve because she was like him. He also liked her because she was not like him. Let us see about the wonderful differences between male and female that God has designed. See, the first difference the woman is the beauty and the man is the beast. <laughs> the woman is the beauty and the man is the beast. And the beauty and the beast, I don't know how many of you read this story. The beauty and the beast, wonderful, wonderful novel it is. Um, so it says, God made Adam stronger than he made Eve. That means in the physical, in the muscle strength. In the muscle strength. So man is stronger than the woman. His physical frame was stronger his shoulders broader and a lot of women would, won't be surprised to learn that men have thicker skulls. That means man's skull is more thicker than the woman's skull. And what did God make Eve to be? That is how God created Adam, the first thing we saw. Then how did God make Eve to be? The word Eve means a life giver. Someone who gives life. So she is the nurturer. The part the, the woman plays in a home is that she nurtures the relationships that God has placed in the family. She nurtures it. So God made her physical body to nurture, to love, to be gentle, to be soft. So nowadays, when we talk about these aspects in women, in girls, many of the girls, because 
in the culture that is playing a dominant role on us so we are we feel we are at par with the men i know in status we are equal in the sight of the lord but in our responsibilities and roles we are different so she feels that why should my body just be dainty delicate like a woman i also need to be you no know, like a man be strong like a man but we have to remember that when god was creating a woman what he had in mind was when he was forming eve was someone who will nurture who will love and who will be gentle and soft that means women we get our beauty not first from the physical appearance outside appearance but from this inner heart qualities that is nurturing loving gentle soft man your wife is for now to i speak to the boys man your to be wife is delicate it's her delicacy that makes her so wonderful you know the emotion part in a family the emotional part in the family is mostly played and covered by the woman in the house so you have a protective instinct for your wife you have to have a protective that's why last week we told no uh when one of the participant asks us how do you need to know come uh, converse or communicate with your wife so we told them that the primary need for a woman is security so man remember that you have to have a protective instinct for your wife she cannot be your target to or a uh, uh, like no a target to outlet your emotions i know in the home we 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 express our emotions but don't make your wife a target for your emotions because she needs protection and security from you as the stronger vessel you have to give her honor as unto the weaker vessel bharya bharya streelu baliyana man gattalu ga devudu vaal tayar chesaru kabatti remember as a stronger vessel you have to honor the weaker vessel not make misuse or try to dominate or control or bo do bossism over the weaker vessel you have to protect her but just because eve was physically weaker than adam that doesn't make her inferior to adam she is not inferior like for example porcelain is there porcelain may not be as strong as steel but is porcelain inferior to steel no porcelain is not inferior to steel then the next one is tortoise and hare now can anyone tell me who is tortoise and who is hare in a marriage can anyone unmute yourself and tell who is the tortoise and who is the hare in a marriage can anyone share, oh, unmute yourself and tell husband is tortoise <laughs> huh? husband is tortoise yeah. husband is tortoise kadale uh. yeah. ఎనర్జీ when you don't get tired but she has more stick to tiveness we stick to things durability which men normally don't like they like to immediately wind up with things and jump to the next thing therefore she is going to outlast you she is going to outlast you see even when you see i don't know how many of you have watched that in your parents marriage because most of you all are still unmarried when there is an argument or when there is a, a like no a conflict it is the man who wants to you no know, quickly somehow try to fix things and get out of the scene, that scene but not the woman the woman will hang on there will you no know, keep nagging on there for months huh you know for months on yeah till they are satisfied that they got the correct solution so that's why they outlast they outlast the situation then the third one is come what is romantic and mechanic what is romantic and what is mechanic who is the romantic and who is the mechanic can you just unmute it and unmute it and tell please who is romantic and who is mechanic tell me 
someone unmute. He has, has pictures. Pictures say his uncle. Ah. Is it right? Man is a mechanic. And... Ah. Yes, yes. Yes, you are right, he Ravi. Is, is it Ravi? Yeah. Okay. Right, we'll see. Man has a job. For what? The, to, keep it. to keep the garden. Where is the uh, 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 garden of Eden? God gave a job to man to keep the garden. What does he need for that? A hard outer shell. That means, and what is woman's responsibility? She is the homemaker. She is to love. Already, Pranita, she shared in the previous slide that she is to love, to nurture, not only to raise the children. So women are soft and romantic and smart and a smart lady learns to keep herself as physically attractive as possible. So which is better? Is uh, romantic is better or mechanic? Which is better? Both are better. Neither is better. They are just different because God made us different. God made us different. Then the other difference is radar and computer. How many of you heard the word radar? How many of you heard the word radar? What is the work of the radar? Radar paninti. What does the radar do? Can uh, unmute it. Unmute yourself and let me know what does the radar do. Then only you can be able to compare, understand. Radar ain't as the ma. Anyone can unmute and tell what is the work of a radar? Signals. Ah, signals. yes. Signals. Signals. Okay, signals. Very good. Very good signals. A man take in and analyzes information logically like a computer. Mm -hmm. Computer what? Computer you feed the information. But what it does? It analyzes everything and gives you the right information. A woman takes in the same data mm -hmm. but also sweeps a scene like radar, noticing and feeling things that a man might miss. Mm -hmm. A man might miss. For example, mm -hmm. I just want to share with you. Yeah, one sec. You know, now there's an information. Suppose it comes to the wife and the husband. The wife, the husband takes in the information logically, just as it is, like it is a matter. But when it, the same information comes to the woman, she just doesn't take it in the, in the form of information. She also tries to analyze the feelings behind the information. Did you all get me? Did you, could you all understand me? What I told? Man, he takes it logically. He'll just take the information as the information. The same information comes to the woman. But how does she look at the information? To the information, she will add the feelings and the emotions of the person or the source from which the information has come. And then she'll start not understand the information. So there are two hemispheres in our brain. I think many of you who have done all these courses, no? There are two information, left and the right hemispheres. So the left hemisphere... One sec. The left hemisphere deals primarily with logic, reasoning, calculation and so forth. I think maybe in the man's brain, the left hemisphere functions a lot or most of the time. That's why they are logic, they reason things, they calculate and so forth. They don't get carried away emotionally. And the right hemisphere deals feelings, emotions, sympathy, Love and intuition. Now, all these as these characters, feeling, emotion, sympathy, love, intuition, in the right hemisphere functions more in the woman's brain. Functions more in the emotion brain. So whenever she listens to something or whenever she has to watch a scenario or deal with an incident, what she does is she doesn't go like the man, logic, reasoning, calculation and so forth. But she views it from the feelings, from the emotions sympathizing with the person, love and intuition. And, and, and for example, suppose uh, um, if everybody comes to her house, uh, a needy person, a needy person, I need some help, I need some help. Lady or man, 
మేము మెన్ అలా థింక్ చేస్తారంటే హౌ ఫార్ ఇట్ ఇస్ రైట్ హౌ ఫార్ ఇట్ ఇస్ రైట్ హౌ ఫార్ ఈస్ జెన్యున్ ఇన్ ఆస్కింగ్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఎనీ వాట్ ఇస్ దట్ జెన్యున్ నీడ్ దిస్ ఇస్ అవర్ లాజికల్ థింకింగ్ బట్ యూ ఉమెన్ వాట్ యూ థింక్ ఈస్ ఇమ్మీడియట్లీ యూ యూ విల్ క్యారీ అవుట్ బై ఎమోషన్స్ సింపతి before they are uh, crying means if the, if the person is crying if the person who comes to you if they need you know, with, with tears even if the woman will go with the emotions and feelings but the man will go with the logic thinking and reasoning calculation how far he is genuine so see the thinking so men use primarily the left side of the brain wow. where there is logic and reasoning and all of that and women use both sides of their brain mm. both sides of the brain so science is showing what we have known for a long time mm. men really only have half a mind mm. i don't mean there are there are some men these are all, this is the general mm. the general uh, uh, thought thing there are some exceptional cases where men also tend to be emotional mm. and you no know, they are, tend to be intuitive all of that but on a general base man mostly is the logical type of thinking then the lover and the achiever the lover and the achiever now tell me who is the lover in this who is the achiever in this can anyone tell me who is lover and who is achiever by seeing that picture you can you can say who is the lover and who is the achiever hey come on guys ra so long you are taking eh you all didn't think about these terms before man is an achiever woman is also yes 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 so a man wants to fix he looks for admiration for his achievements that is how a man is you no know, wired he suppose the wife suppose the woman comes to him with some problem so we have to remember one thing here see one second i want to see your faces when you want to talk uh um, see when woman comes to a man to share her problems or her you no know, challenges remember one thing men women don't come to you because we can't solve our problems you think if your if the woman is coming to you sharing the problem she wants the problem to be fixed it is not that the woman cannot fix a problem why she comes to you is she just wants a listening ear and an understanding heart but you because you are logical so the first thing you try to jump in is to fix the problem so don't try to do that because at the very first outset we don't want a you no know, fixing of the problem we want an understanding we want an understanding take it take in my hand hello yeah someone is on my mic is on there so the yeah, so man look man wants to fix and he looks for whatever achievements he does he wants admiration and most of the women what we do is though in this at this area we can do but we take that men for granted so a woman wants to be loved she wants to be understood and cherished remember men boys please listen to it woman wants to be loved and second thing is she wants to be understood and cherished so god tells a husband to love his wife and he tells the wife to reverence or respect her husband like we already told you last week the primary need for the woman is security and love and for the man it is respect so we see that in ephesians 5:33 why so they can each eat meet the others deepest needs the deepest needs of a man is respect and the deepest need of a woman is security so that is why god has met so that we meet each other's needs not just our needs not just our needs a husband and wife may say well we are not different in that particular area and you may not be but it's these differences believe it or not that unite us like last week we are we showed you that hand uh, uh, exercise you know my my strengths going and no bringing vasant out of his weaknesses and vasant strength come into my weakness and lifts me up from my weaknesses so we are made different so that we are 
we are united together and god made us different that he might make us one god made us different that he might make us one one sec one sec here also i want to add something sometimes i think when god wanted to make us one why did he have to make us different ఎందుకండి ఇంత తలకాయ నొప్పులు ఒకరొకరు అర్థం చేసుకోవడం ఉండాలి ఎందరిని ఒకలా చేసి ఉంటే ఎంత బాగుంది కదా నో నో దెర్ ఇస్ నో ఫన్ ఇన్ సేమ్నెస్ దెర్ ఇస్ ఫన్ అండ్ స్ట్రెంగ్త్ ఇన్ వన్నెస్ సో గాడ్ మేడ్ అస్ డిఫరెంట్ దట్ హీ మైట్ మేక్ అస్ వన్ దట్ మీన్స్ మేక్ అస్ వన్ సో ఈక్వల్ బట్ డిఫరెంట్ equal but different okay equal but different one minute yeah not here yeah right so god created mankind in his own image in the image of god he created them male and female here the man is male and female is combined man okay so he created them male and female Fibel, he created them, Genesis 127. In terms of bearing God's image, man and woman stand before God. What is that God's image? Equal in value, equal in worth, equal in dignity. Galatians 3.28. We are equal. In status, we are equal. But in roles, we are different. So, so are men and women equal in the sight of god yes the clarity of scripture is amazing regarding equality resounding yes let us see how it is many other passages explain that they are equal in other except to for example both men and women equally are sinners needing grace and salvation so both of them we both are sinners we both need grace and salvation before god second thing we are equally forgiven men didn't receive more forgiveness and women less forgiven no 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 equally we are forgiven and then equally invited before the throne of grace i the krupa samasaram yaddu ko iddaru kuda vachcham not just men is is throne of grace is approachable to both man and women so equally indwelt by the holy spirit parshudhat devudu iddarlo kuda samanaga bartaloni bharaloni purushuloni sthriloni jeevisthunadu ayina and not only that very equally heirs of god devune ka paali bhagasthulu saha paali bhagasthulu manu not only that equal in dominance over creation however men and women are not equal in their abilities as created by god except the abilities except abilities okay men and women are not equal in their abilities as god created by created by so god's word very clearly says male and female he created them it means that there are two sexes and not one there are two sexes and not one in god's side both are of equal worth because he created in his image as male and female so there are some inherent um differences both physical and psychological between man and woman let us see a good knowledge of these inbuilt differences between the marriage partners helps us to understand one another as husbands and wives that's what we are here to learn what are these differences a god created man and woman to complement each other even though they are very different from one another not to the instead of last time we, we told you know, we are called not to compete but to complete each other as we understand these differences we will avoid the danger of ignoring the needs of our partners and inflicting wounds in him or her for a happy marriage we must make allowances for these differences we make allowances for these differences not for not to fight but to make allowances for these differences in marriage two adults with diverse personalities are brought together unless 
we accept these differences and understand the way the other partner is made up there will be the, the possibility of misunderstanding the partner misunderstanding the partner and getting into conflict so in the beginning i told you, you know, if you don't understand these differences which god designed in us it create a conflict if you understand these dif these differences which god has designed you and your uh, your partner you can celebrate these, these these differences so let us now examine some of the basic psychological mental and emotional differences between men and women which are generally found let us say men are logical already we told you the previous slide men are logical and women are emotional so men think about the pros and cons the cause and effect of a matter whereas women generally react to a thing emotionally we already explained it already so we'll go to the next one actually see because women are emotional and men are theoretical mm -hmm. logical so the man learns to become emotional under the influence of a woman are you hearing me men once you get married because you are logical that's how you are wired and not made by god once you get into marriage and start living with a woman you also learn to slowly be emotional in some issues okay then the second one is men have a theoretical mind while women have a more person centered mind see yours men's is theory theory you are mostly think in the form of theory that's why you use a lot of logic but because we women are emotional beings like we told last week so our thinking mostly revolves around people so that's why we become person centered mind men are quite detached and unrelated to the immediate situations whereas a woman thinks of people and in terms of people when we think about an issue we are always attached those that issue that that matter needs to be attached to some person but for you for men you men you separate the person from the issue and you think she relates things to the immediate situation men tend to be more abstract and impersonal under the influence of women men can acquire a feeling for persons okay the third one is man is more active venturesome and aggressive now again i'm telling you this is on the general scale we are talking there are exceptions like for there are women who are active venturesome aggressive they like to go for adventure no adventure trips and all of that but on the general base the way god created a man and a woman man is more active venturesome and aggressive woman is more sensitive and passive she tries to become more active with the help of her husband this explains the lack of speed and quickness among women there are women who are speed and quickness in some uh, like in some couples we see where the woman is more speed than the man the man becomes passive but those are all except exceptional cases but on a general note it is man who is more active venturesome and aggressive and the woman becomes sensitive and passive so men go ahead and women lag behind in a general sense women being sensitive need to be handled delicately guys listen women being sensitive need to be handled delicately you cannot handle a woman like you handle a guy keep that in mind because before marriage you keep moving about with a uh, with your guys your friends and you handle them in a different way if you bring the same way of handling to your spouse your wife there comes problem so remember she is sensitive so you need to handle delicately then the fourth one is man is more stable emotionally in big things of life and women cannot face the facts boldly again there are few women who because of the house situations where the man is a dysfunctional man she general ten women tend to no handle the facts boldly this means that men are bold in facing up to the problems while women tend to lack courage in such situations so she needs the covering of the husband in such in such scenarios fifth one man is more nomadic in nature and woman is more attached to places you know this one thing i want to talk to you over here uh i grew up in a home where my dad sisters two sisters aunts 
uh, they were they didn't get married till they passed away they lived with us so my parents both were railway employees so most of the time our childhood we grew up in the railway quarters um so we lived for long long years in each bungalow long long years 15 years 16 years 17 years so my both my aunts what they used to do being women they used to get so much so much you know emotionally entangled with the people around there with the places around there so for the very one or two times that we had to change our bungalows you not know, go to a bigger bigger bungalow because of my parents promotion and all that so whenever we had to change the house they literally used to sit and cry as if there's a dead body in the house see because we get attached to places and to persons so for us change becomes difficult we get emotionally disturbed uh, not uh, disturbed so men try to understand this what we say in a in marriage seminars what we tell the husbands is when you are planning for a change for a transfer please well in advance prepare your wife's mind so that she doesn't get disturbed and she doesn't get uh, no emotionally disturbed okay in case of necessity men do not hesitate to change places in fact they like variety men like variety but women generally do not like a change of place as they feel attached therefore they get disturbed with a change of place women take time to get adjusted to new places then women are interested in details men see things in a broader way we look into the details but you take the broader picture women are generally interested in the minute details of day to day happenings and they want to narrate these details because we are interested in details we want to talk also about details because of which we become more talkative than the man this makes women talkative men have a wider perspective of things so a combination of these two traits will help the marriage partners to look at things clearly and to arrive at proper decision that means the longer the the overall view and the minute details those two put together makes good decisions understood so men can concentrate undisturbed whereas women get disturbed over trivial matters men man and man is concentrating on one thing he doesn't get disturbed by all the things that he, that are happening around him but women though we are concentrating on something but every small disturbance around distraction around it disturbs us speech has got different meanings for men and women you want to tell this okay men tend to use speech to express ideas and communicate factual information while women have a tendency to use speech to express feelings or vent out their emotions that means for example if my, my if me and uh, pranita my wife if we um, attend some marriage suppose if my wife didn't come only i attend the marriage the moment i come from the um, wedding my wife was how is the wedding i said fine that's all <laughs> so uh, how is the food good so tasty uh, how is the decoration decor uh, 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 it's okay <laughs> like see i only i express my ideas just i will give you the facts the information of the facts that's all but the woman they will use their speech to vent out their emotions because mm -hmm. they, they, they in their communication they mix the emotions and feelings that's why they are relationally oriented this makes women uh, uh, repetitious in speech repetitive repetition 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 that means men have to develop speech which can communicate feelings to their wives when a husband says i love you to his wife it would satisfy her very much she would like to hear it said over and over again okay that means again i'll tell you one thing uh, in the in the speech actually oh, i think last time we uh, we said it or not but let me tell you again so um on an average how many words the yeah on an average how many words the man will use in a per day and how many words the woman will use per day uh, on an average on an average so in one of the survey research it reveals that men will use 21 uh, sorry 7000 words per day 7000 words per day 
and the woman will use 21,000 per day. That means the ratio is 1 is to 3. That's why the problem with men is they will use all the 7,000 words in their workplace and with their friends or outside. By the time they come back, no words at all. But the woman, if, if the, the wife is a housewife, otherwise she's, even though she's a working lady, she will keep at least some so seven to 10,000 words for her husband. The moment the husband entered the home, she will start blah, 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 blah. They want this poor fellow, he finished his court outside only. The all the 7,000 words. He will tell, mm, mm, mm. that will irritate the woman, the wife. So men, don't use all the 7,000 words outside with your friends in the office. Women, don't throw all your 21,000 words on your husband because he has very less quota. Then again, there is difference mm. in the way we express love to the children. No, and man and as no father and mother. A man does not get emotional over his children. No, the emotional expression of the love is not done by the father. The emotional expression of the love is mostly done by the mother. So he loves them, but the way he expresses it is different from that of his wife. No, the, the father expresses love to the children, but it's different. The father feels expressing love to the children is providing for the needs. But it is not that with the mother. The mother, no, in visual, in no, in in the, in the physical, no action form, we ex we like to cuddle them, we like to kiss them, all of that. This makes a woman possessive about her children. A father communicates courage, and a mother communicates concern or love. Concern or love. Then tenth one. After marriage, man needs only occasional reminders that his wife loves him. See, man is not very much bothered whether his wife says I love you or anything or all of that. Because okay. occasional it's, it's chalega. But for a woman, she needs constantly. Even if it is an, in a day two, three times with a genuine I love you, it really fill, fills her emotional tank. A man is made to love and a woman is made to be loved. A man is made to love and a woman is made to be loved. And this makes a woman to become sensitive. So men, guys, remember, you want to, you don't want to buy your four, four, no, to be a uh, wife, to become sensitive, no, and moody, keep, give her constant reminders that you love her. Therefore, a man has to love his wife with gentleness and tenderness and the wife reciprocates. Your life, your love, though you are a man, though you are no a wired heart, tough, but when it comes to expressing love to your wife, you need to learn gentleness and tenderness. You cannot do in the, the boyish and the rough way because we cannot women take it. Then man can easily forget a problem, but a woman broods over it. See, because the way God created women, we are emotional beings. So when there is a conflict in marriage, oh, they shout, they fight, they argue, they exchange words, all of that finishes up. And the man gets over it and passes, goes ahead, goes forward. The woman goes forward, but she carries the feelings with her from this disagreement, from this conflict forward with her. So she keeps thinking about why we did we have an argument? Why did my husband talk like this? Why did he behave like this? Woman keeps thinking emotionally until the problem or the conflict is settled. Until the woman gets satisfied. Huh? I got a satisfied resolution for this conflict till such time we are emotionally disturbed. This results in the change of her moods and behavior and responses. No, you have a conflict. And you resolve and then the man becomes normal and he wants to just go out for a walk or go to a stroll into the park. But the woman will not want to come. No, not now. Because for her to change her moods and behavior and responses, it takes time. It takes time. Man has to note this and attend to a need of comfort, security and assurance. So woman on the other hand should not misunderstand the attitude of her husband as neglect. Girls because they are not wired like us made like us they very quickly jump into the second thing so they many times take it for granted that as a woman as a wife you need comfort security and assurance it's not that they're neglecting you because 
they don't give more importance to this comfort security and assurance so they quickly you know move on so because they are moving on don't think that they are neglecting you you can tell them you can verbalize your need and you no know, take that you no know, get that need met by them but don't get into a negative mind thinking that they are neglecting us then priorities in everyday life for a man the most significant thing in his life is his work and earning money because he is the primary breadwinner bread so for him the significant thing in his life is his work and earning money he has to run the family so he'll be thinking about his career ladder so as a wife don't think always you think about wife about your work you don't think about the family that is their priority but man you also need to think that you also your responsibility also lies to your no involvement about your children are bringing things in the home so for a woman it is in the form of a well kept home and appreciation from her husband guys listen she is more well kept home yeah learn this she is more concerned about her children and home though she is working outside whereas he is more concerned about his boss progress and success in his work expressed as his professional pride mm -hmm. then attitude towards sex yeah attitude towards sex actually the sexual mechanism in both man and woman is totally different sexual uh, the mechanism totally different for men men tend to isolate sex from other emotions so that means for for men even though he had fight with the with his with his partner's wife just before wow Well, one hour before their bedtime, he simply he kept aside his um, all emotions and he will simply he will enjoy his the sexual life. But when the sexual urges strike him, the mood and the surroundings make little difference for him. It's not about the emotions. It's a man look at the sex as it's an act only. You will not mix the emotions in that. That's why he will separate the emotions from the sex and he will see it as a, a an act. So woman sees sex in a far wider setting than the bedroom, because she sees it in the total setting of a relationship with her husband in every aspect of her life for marriage. That means for woman, um, the sex means relationship with the husband plus physical union. These these two club together, combined together for her it's a sex. If you separate the both, no. So if 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 he, if she had fight with the husband. if she had a relationship uh, problem with the husband that affect the sexual relationship with her husband that means the husband is more for the act her value is more towards togetherness rather than the sexual act intuition this is a gift given to the woman by god so women we need to know understand this intuition properly and put it to correct use no this is a special uh, no awareness a gift that god has endowed to the woman most women have a special feature known as intuition no we can uh, handle we can view things ahead we come to know in our senses this is a special gift given to the woman sometimes it is no it is uh, mixed with fear the physical intuition so that we need to be very careful in our you no know, discernment which is which intuition is from the holy spirit god and which intuition is from our physical fear so this feminine intuition can be used properly when she is in right relationship with god when we are not in right relationship with god so we pick up intuition or signals from our fleshly fear but when we are in the right relationship with god we know the holy spirit's prior alerts that this area the evil one wants to attack so cover with prayer and the blood of jesus this area there are chances for the evil one to attack so keep your boundaries intact all these are intuitions so women uh, please uh, Uh, develop this you no know, fine tune it by being in right relationship with god then 15th is depression mm -hmm. women are more prone prone to depression in men it is crisis oriented for men when they go through crisis or oh, no they go into a sort of depression but for women menstrual cycle menopause all of this comes into depression types 
in women a vague generalized almost unidentifiable feeling of discouragement is experienced on a regular basis this is where she needs the understanding and comfort of her husband don't just push her aside don't neglect her try to understand that is the way she has been created so understand and comfort her during those depression times okay uh we will see the, some of the behavior and attitude differences for example if you have that ring bring that ring okay yeah um um how, how the men's thinking process uh works and how, how the women's thinking process works okay for men uh, it's like block type block type that means box type otherwise compartment type um just 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 right so one minute one. yeah yeah just we will stop the screen sharing and we will we'll explain it to you now we'll explain it to you now okay so men is like a box type a compartment type compartment type there is no link between these two compartments two compartments it's on the, 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 the brain the the, the, the beginning of the first slide we we, we show you know that one the the men's thinking process a brain works it's like block type that means as long as he's has he is in the home he is thinking about the home the moment he is on the road his box the road box so that that compartment is different and the the work compartment is different so different 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 compartments he thinks there is no link between these links these these, these boxes so that's why men is very uh, so because he thinks one thing at a time not in uh, or multiples. Uh, multiples so that means the block type so but woman is not like that not box type but then there's no link between these boxes for women you know women the first slide that we showed you for this topic about the woman's brain and the man's brain yeah. you know we saw in the man's brain everything is you no know, all well organized all boxes boxes so for every different aspects of life he has different boxes but we saw the woman's brain it was all intertwined intertwined all together this is how the woman's brain is you know see how it is it is not boxes it is all linked right from the beginning to the end that means from the birth to the grave everything is intertwined we don't you know see things separately when we think about one thing we link it with some other issue and we think in terms of two things see that's how this is how god has created a woman's brain so for women they think in the wider picture into connecting so many things we think about an issue but for men we y'all don't connect y'all separately think about each issue so this is how god created man and this is how god created woman so both these thinking when they come together that builds the marriage okay share you know, my share we share uh, powerpoint yeah yeah that is about thinking process but next the memory of incidents for women it's less but for men for 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 for, for, for husband it is less but for women it's more it's more and the same thing repeating the same story repeating the same story for men it's no for women it is yes and able to forget and forgive for men it's yes for women because they are emotionally hurt they will take time they will take time they will take time that means um their emotional plates were disturbed when there was a uh, conflict between husband and wife their emotional plates were disturbed so again those emotional plates will to, to settle down it take them some, some time so as uh, would be husbands learn this thing so women they take they take time to release forgiveness they they, they forgive you but to settle down their emotional plates they will take time so understand them but reaction time for women, for men it's immediate but for women not immediate they will wait for the right opportunity and peak time of reaction for men it's after coming from home for but for women but for women um, um during the menstrual period because of um, hormonal imbalance and sometimes before their periods before their periods um one week before their period's date uh, their uh, hormones will imbalance 
because of their hormonal imbalance they will get a lot of mood swings for everything they will cry for everything they shout a lot of mood swings will be there after the um, um, periods are over again they will be all right so their peak time of reaction is tension and menstrual period and then comparing with others for men it's less Where, uh, otherwise no or less but for women it's more so I, I encourage you girls let listen to me don't compare your husband with some other man with your father with your brother with your brother-in-law don't compare by comparing your husband with some other man you are attacking his manliness don't do that please and signs of beginning of conflict for men facial expressions will change no smile walking here and there coming coming home late not interested in anything tense in workplace these are the signs but for women unnecessary scolding and beating the children and vessel banging these are the signs so boys and girls get ready so but these differences need not result in conflict you know god didn't keep these differences so that wife and husband keep having conflict every time no we not conflict but we need to complement see these are only to complement each other these differences can be overcome by true love which is mature and which goes beyond emotions and feelings until it becomes a commitment yes this is important we start until it becomes a commitment, commitment. yes yeah. i think we stop here yeah. so we have to the following are some of the ways in which you can complement each one another number one is not to complete but to complete already we 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 shared it we we, we explained it last 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 year class so we 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 uh, showed it in a uh, what is that small skit no like that okay then husband to wife what are the uh, things actually husband to wife that is the the wife's need of security can be met by the husband through ample of appreciation and reassurance as a wife is prone to get sensitive and depressed in the face of criticism and develop negative feelings it is necessary for the husband to correct her gently and in loving manner that is husband uh, that is husband to wife so give importance to certain small things such as birthdays and other anniversaries and response suitably give sufficient time to her for her recognizing her need for togetherness this togetherness did not be necessarily sex try to provide an environment of security for her by being considerate the sense of security can vary from woman to woman because it it will vary from their personality from woman to woman recognize the variation in the moods of your of your wife which many times depends on her monthly cycle be considerate and patient boys listen to me please before getting into the marriage learn these things she can appear totally illogical and irrational during that uh, that, that the period's time very nagging mood swings lot of things will be there you need not reject your wife's suggestions due to your male ego e g o ego that means edging god out e g o discover her individual needs and try to meet them now to the wife to the husband no oh, see this wonderful quote here i can't promise to fix all your problems but i can promise you won't have to face them alone this is a big assurance that the wife can give to her husband no we cannot fix all the problems but at least we can know together face the problems and that law gives them lot of courage see the greatest responsibility of the wife is to accept her husband accept him unconditionally as he is just as christ has accepted us unconditionally as we are with all of our sins with all of our weaknesses with all of our shortcomings with all of our frailties how many times we irritate him it sets the man free and gives him confidence when we accept as wives when we accept the husband man as he is it gives him confidence another important key to a happy marriage is understanding 
where there is no understanding you can find small minute reasons to know to go apart to break your marriage but when there is understanding even great problems also you can work out and live together so understanding plays a very you no know, vital role in a for a successful marriage a wife can lighten the loads of her husband by understanding him well much of a husband's content comes from the mental stimulus he gets from his wife contentment she need not be highly educated or be brilliant to show her interest and alertness in her husband's matters you know sometimes as wife we may no, not be able to understand the theory part of their work but at least we can understand the emotions the struggles that they're going the challenges that they're going at least let us learn to try to understand empathize and stand with them she should participate in his things with enthusiasm and just no her support can give him strength in every situation no take interest in his talents spend time with him together don't say i am not interested i am not coming no just as you want your a uh, man to no take interest in your in your uh, in your uh, no areas of interest vice versa also the husband may be having his own problems fears and discouragements dis discouragements some of his reactions may be his cries for help remember women mm -hmm. try to understand this some of his reactions may be his cries for help let us note quite in ourselves there understand and help them a wife's indifference in such times adds more frustration and failure to his wife but no we foolishly as women what we do in their challenges tough times we also get on to the same level of reaction and no push them off a wife should be sensitive at such times to go to the rescue of her husband another key is approval it does not mean that the wife approves everything but it shows that the wife is conscious of the husband's merit it helps the husband to realize his full potential in other words it gives him the boost he requires you know people outside all the people outside may try to understand but if the wife is not understanding living with understanding with the husband in the house it makes no difference if 100 people outside understand it a loving wife also loves not to condemn her husband when he commits a mistake she will not blame him but she will share the blame the next thing is appreciation this is not flattery but an indication of your delight at his achievement the more marriage partners see the differences the better they will be able to understand that they are dealing with fundamental attitudes that cannot be given up or changed fundamental attitudes now see man's logical way of thinking that is the way god wired him we cannot change that and the woman's emotional way of thinking that is the way god wired her you cannot change it so that cannot give, be given up or changed when understood properly and accepted mutually the differences between the husband and wife no longer irritate one another but generate sympathy but generate sympathy loving and living with your partner takes daily determination and practice and the giving up of one's self for the good of other mm. you are entering marriage for the good of others not selfishly for your own good any of the guys or girls on the zoom call if that is your thought pattern for marriage please set it right and then get into marriage if you are entering marriage for the good of yourself it will become a selfish marriage and it will not last long in order to find the ultimate happiness in marriage husband and wife must work together to make their mental emotional and spiritual differences blend into a harmonious mm. relationship you know when you take a piano are all the call the keys on the piano c are all the keys on the piano a no if if all the keys would have been c if all the keys would have been a there would be no harmony and there will be no sweet music the different keys when they come together make a fine you know wonderful music that is what happens in a marriage and one day you will realize that you are married to your best friend conclusion oh <laughs> what a powerful statements anyhow we will send this notes 
um, again you go through it because um, because of the lack of the time, we don't have time to explain everything. So in conclusion, we strongly believe that the music of our relationships should not be merely the sound of singing in unison. Okay, yeah. You know, see, when you take a choir, when yeah. you take a choir, a Christmas choir or whatever, no, there are four types of singing happens. Okay. There are some who sing soprano, there are some who sing alto, there are some who sing tenor, there are some who sing the bass part. No, if all sing soprano, you can enjoy it, but it won't be so very, no, uh, the enjoyable to our ears, no, only when everyone is singing soprano. But when all the four, the soprano, the alto, the tenor and the bass get together, that's a wonderful choir. That's yeah. a wonderful choir. That means in that, uh, um, that choir, um, people will, will enjoy soprano and they will uh, I mean, commend him. Yeah, wonderful. The bass and alto, everyone, will, they bring the beautiful the, to, the uh, to the choir. It means that the differences between men and women are respected and affirmed and valued. This is very important. So, boys and girls, respect. Effort and value. It means that we will not try to duplicate each other. No, he cannot duplicate your spouse because you are totally different. But we'll highlight in each other the unique qualities that make for mutual enrichment. Enriching each other. Dealing with differences in marriage is a stepping stone to having a fulfilling marriage to having a fulfilling marriage because we are counseling so many couples now because of the ignorance of these differences their fights their conflicts are occurring in a very bad shape they're in a bad shape they come to us because the lack of the knowledge of these differences we celebrate of differences which is what makes us unique and unique as man as husband a logical thinking pranita is unique as in emotional intuition praise god for that praise god for that husband and wives are designed to complement each other when the man is weak his wife is strong when the when she stumbles he is there to pick her up life is easier when two hearts and minds are committed to working together to face the challenges of the day gary chapman a great man of god a family counselor a great marriage is not when the perfect couple comes together it is when an imperfect couple learns to enjoy their differences their differences i hope uh, this was i have opened to you in no in many of the uh, things that we spoke while teaching to you all, we ourselves were evaluating because we are man and woman. No, we were seeing where we were. I was, I was introspecting where I, I was failing. I do not, I don't know about husband, my husband Basan, whether he was introspecting and teaching. But I was introspecting and teaching. Yeah, I think these are the areas I need to work. You know, I told you, you no know, marriage. Man while I'm teaching on this, literally my wife is spoken me. Where I'm failing, she's spoken me. Yeah, so <laughs> so even after 33 and a half years marriage, still these differences are causing sometimes. <laughs> after 33 and a half years of marriage, we are still poking at each other means. Remember, yeah. differences will be there till mm -hmm. death do us apart. Mm -hmm. We need to maturely know, knit those differences together in a way that we make a marriage workable and livable. When we know, we just concentrate on the differences and don't use it for the benefit of our relationship, mm -hmm. that becomes a big problem for marriage. Wow, so we'll take a break, I think, here. Yeah? We'll take a break. Yes. Yes, Angle, thank you so much. I think, as you said, so many things that, that we have learned, personally, me, I have learned in this session. It's an eye opener, of course. <laughs> so many topics that you're just going through each other, uh, each of the points. Of course, I think I need to revive or review all these points. 
sit us sit silently and review all these points so that i can grasp all these things but it's a yeah. very informative session thank you so much praise uh, god praise god yep yeah. I, i i'm sure most of you guys in this session are feeling the same uh, let's take it um, take some time out and then put some effort in understanding these very valuable points that uncle and auntie shared with us and now we will take 10 minutes of a break and then we'll join again for the second part of this session yeah thank you can i ask a quick question was it question time is afterwards ah you can post your question uh, maybe in the you chat you can post or... your question here yeah yeah now you can now you want to, you want to ask no problem you want to ask then you can ask if you don't want to break you can be here otherwise others will can go and take a break is <laughs> <laughs> any a quick question um you mentioned something about uh love how women and men are to show love and women want to be loved or something yeah pretty reworded that but um i feel is this like me I, mean, i remember us with my friend Jamie well, obviously when me and date the uh, Susan were first dating and we were understanding about love and receiving love and i noticed that like in the west um Susan would show her love more practically and it's very interesting and i was talking to my friend about it and we did a little research and apparently like in indian culture you can correct me if i'm wrong but in indian culture men are more like the stoic kind of figures where they aren't to receive all emotion but they are supposed to show loads of emotion to the woman while in the west like men like to receive compliments as well like they like to receive it when a woman says compliments to the guy i don't know like if you what your views on that were no no the receiving compliments is not just only in the west even it's in the uh, in the indian culture every man he loves to listen you uh, know receive compliments no matter people 100 people outside compliment and if the woman in the house doesn't compliment it makes no difference for the man so compliments is there for every man irrespective of which culture they are in and okay men want to be so women want to be loved and men want but has to oh what's that love okay what is that baby so even for me i want to be loved by my wife because because um uh, uh in my ch- childhood um i i missed this actually of course my parents loved me but somehow this part is missed me uh, that made me insecure and my parents because of the ignorance they didn't express it in that such way so i i was eagerly waiting for the marriage the girl to be i, I want to be loved by 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 girl i want to be loved <laughs> i was eagerly waiting <laughs> yeah. uh, so the The, the moment actually we got married in 1991 may 27th oh, yeah. so i i expressed it so been i need more love from you i need more touch from you like that so <laughs> I, because i want to be uh, feel loved um the is is men's because men see men's way of expressing love is different but women's way of expressing love is different but men is more in a physical touch physical way physical touch that is a i want to be loved by by uh feel loved by touch by my wife's touch okay so the, the woman to um, i received from her i saw that um, insecurity slowly dissipating because which i experienced all the i got married at the age of 29 so i experienced all this uh, this what is that one sort of insecurity slowly it started disappearing because of the the love i received it's not just women even men also want to be loved by their spouse only thing is the difference both the man needs love the woman needs love because that is the way god made us you know why is our god a triune god why is a god a triune god they love they express love to each other so that is the way he made us in his image so it's not that that the woman only needs love and the man doesn't need it. but the man he instigates the love and the woman gets instigated got it then <laughs> the man instigates the love and the woman gets instigated and but the woman needs to reciprocate in the way in the way it speaks love to the man not in the way she wants it speaks love to her 
That's really good. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, that makes yeah sense. so that's why for a man, for a man, appreciation is love. For a woman, it may not be so much. So these, the woman needs to learn and the man needs to learn. The woman needs to learn how to express love to the man and the man needs to learn how to express love to the woman. Now, what happened is most of the time, the man you know, shows love to the woman in the way he wants to receive love. And that speaks nothing to the woman. And vice versa, the woman tries to express love to the, to the man in the way she wants to receive love. And that makes no sense to them. So that's why we need to learn. The woman needs to learn how to express love to man. The man needs to learn how to express love to them. It happens over the time that mm -hmm. you don't come as a finished material into marriage. Mm -hmm. You keep learning and learning and learning and learning. It's nothing but, it's nothing but learning each other's love language. That is very important. <laughs> each other's love language. There are five. Actually, there are five love languages. We actually we, we, we actually we. Uh, uh, speak in the marriage seminars and even in premarital seminars. There are five love languages, physical touch, quality time, affirming words and gifts and uh, uh, acts of service. There are five love languages. So maybe your love language may be different from your uh, would be love language and her love language is different from you. So learning each other's first, I have to learn what is my love language. At the same time, I have to learn uh, what is my partners but spouse love language so my love language my, my love tank emotional love tank cannot be filled with my wife's love language hmm. my emotional love tank should be filled with my love language my primary love language out of these five love languages one of the love languages is my primary the primary for me is for, for my wife it's maybe least <laughs> okay so my wife has different primary love languages for me so my wife has to know what is my primary law language and she has to reach me with that primary law language, my primary law language. Then only my emotional love tank will be filled and I feel love. The same way I have to know what is my wife's primary law language and I have to reach her with that law language, then only her emotional love tank will be full. If it doesn't happen, that's where the dryness will start in any marriage. The dryness, the emo when the emotional love tanks are empty, Saturn will put two seeds, negative seeds. One is inferiority, the second one is insecurity. This is the problem with many marriages. Because they're failing mm. to eat, fill each other's love tanks with their love language. Slowly the marriage, the dryness in the marriage is creeping in. Mm. That's very good points. Yeah, thank you for that. So your question is answered, Dan? Yeah. So like in a nutshell, like you believe the man's meant to show that love first and the woman to reciprocate. Yeah. Interesting. How come the man has to share it first in that situation? Is that because like the man's the leader and he's meant to kind of lead in that aspect? Pardon, I couldn't get you. What you asked, I couldn't get you. So basically you mentioned how that the man is to show love and the woman is to reciprocate. Is that showing that the man needs to do it first? The man is the? Is that show that I... the man has to do it first? As in yes, like, to yes, show the love yes, first? Yes, yes. The man needs to show love first. And the woman, uh, she gets, you no. Know, when the man, it says the man instigates and the woman gets instigated. Normally, that is the trend, but there are some times where the husband, the man also wants the woman to be the initiator. Yeah. yeah. Is it like more like a general but on a general like... on a gen on a general note, it is the man who is the initiator. But there are times, occasional times where the man also wants the woman to be the initiator of lovemaking. OK, thank you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Maybe we'll we'll come we'll we'll take two more minutes or five more minutes of break and then we'll join we'll, we'll start our session part two. For those who join now, I think we have covered part one, understanding the differences of how God created man and woman, what each of them has uh, individually and how to understand and 
and follow certain uh, steps. And this session is being recorded. And for, for those who missed it so far, uh, this will be available on our uh, YouTube uh, page. And the link will be available uh, for the church members, I think. For those who are interested, uh, please reach out individually uh, using a chat, and then we can send you the church link uh, in YouTube. And you can follow there. I think it's 740, Uncle. 740 is good. We can. 740 means what is our time? Oh, sorry. 210? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'll do. Yeah. Thank you. Me, Kasal breaks. Is to Nathan Kuntaka. My breaks is to Nathan Kuntaka. My breaks. Maku breaks system and card mercy. Yeah. Amy, our and Arutun Tragada are doubt clear chest there, reputed Jutil and Yen. Yes, summers can a sigh, what the Gadani that the stage gone open market. So sweet. You can say one ignorance costs a lot in a marriage. Yeah. What we are. Wheel and Antwarku, it is better for them to get knowledge, knowledgeable, no, about the things involved in marriage. Mm -hmm. They are thinking nowadays, no, mostly, chinchinavatic ignorance of the small details in the marriage, mm -hmm. it is going to such a great height, no, Antwar Kilpat Nante, Asla did salt chedam, talapran talk costum. So, all these youngsters who joined today on last week and this week on this Zoom call, pre they are very blessed, I say. No, to not get all this very, mm. very much. Mm. At the same time, they are even accountable also. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Information comes accountability also. Mm. The video is not done. It is not done. ఏమో <laughs> 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 Mm -hmm. One lady here in Hyderabad, she does ministry amongst the women and all that. So she started this some four months back. No? Yeah, four this months. is the fourth time. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is the fourth month we are doing. Okay. Okay. In conflict, so uh, last three weeks, then she deal just now. So again, it was a very important uh, aspect of conflict is uh, uh, extra marital affairs. So, mm -hmm. it was the deal just now. Making marriage a fire proof. Mm -hmm. uh, very practical mm -hmm. the deal mm -hmm. just seven to eight thirty. My Indian timings prakar seven to eight thirty. I'll be almost midnight about. No, no, no. Seven to eight thirty. Mm -hmm. Am Amma Rama, tell it. మల్టీస్పెషాలిటీ హాస్పిటల్ రీసెంట్ గానే బిల్డ్ చేశారన్న ఉయ్యూర్లోనే పెద్ద <laughs>
ఇంకో అక్క అమ్మా రెండో అక్క వాళ్ళు రీసెంట్ గా యుఎస్ మూవ్ అయ్యారన్నా మన టైం అయినట్టు ఉంది రవి దాదాపు వచ్చారు అంకిల్ ఐ థింక్ కపుల్ ఆఫ్ మోర్ మెంబర్స్ జస్ట్ మీరు స్టార్ట్ చేసే ముందు యా మేబీ మెసక మహాపరిశుద్ధులైన తండ్రి ప్రేమ కలిగిన దేవ నాయన తండ్రి నీ ప్రణాళికలు మా పట్ల ఎంతో గొప్పవి దేవ మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తా ఉన్నాం దేవా తండ్రి మా ప్రతి మా లైఫ్లో ప్రతి ఏరియాని మీరు పట్టించుకునే దేవుడు అయినందుకు మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తా ఉన్నాం ఎంతో మందికి మాలో లేని అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ని టీచింగ్ ని ప్రవ్వా అయ్యా తండ్రి మరి మీరు మాకు దయచేసి ఈ సెషన్స్ ద్వారా మీరు దయచేసినందుకు మీకు వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తా ఉన్నాం దేవా మరి మరి అన్న చెప్తా ఉన్నారు వీఆర్ బ్లెస్డ్ నాట్ ఓన్లీ బ్లెస్డ్ బట్ వీఆర్ అకౌంటబుల్ అని అవును ప్రవ్వా సహాయం చేయండి దేవా మేమందరం ఈవెన్ దూ వీఆర్ మ్యారీడ్ ఫర్ సో లాంగ్ మరి కొత్తగా మరి పెళ్లికి ప్రిపేర్ అవుతున్న బిడ్డలు తండ్రి వివాహాలు అయ్యి మరి మా లైఫ్స్లో మేము వెళ్తున్నాం మాకు అందరికి కూడా ప్రభా మరి ఇవి ఎంతో మంచి లెసన్స్ గా ప్రభా మీరు మా జీవితాల నుంచి మనం అడుగుతా ఉన్నాం దేవా మరి నీ వాక్యం ప్రభా మా హృదయాల్లో భద్రపరచుకొని మరి ఇవి ప్రాక్టికల్ వేస్ లో మరి మేము నేర్చుకుంటుండగా ప్రభా వీటిని మేము మా లైఫ్ లో ఇంప్లిమెంట్ చేయడానికి సహాయం చేయండి దేవా నువ్వు మమ్మల్ని ఎంత డిఫరెంట్ గా క్రియేట్ చేసావు కానీ ఎంత యునైటెడ్ గా ఉండమంటున్నావు అన్నది ప్రభా మేము గ్రహించి దేవా తండ్రి కంపీట్ చేసుకోకుండా కాంప్లిమెంట్ చేసుకునే వారిగా ప్రభా మమ్మల్ని మీరు సిద్ధపరచండి ఆ విధంగా మేము జీవించి నీ నామానికి మహిమ తెచ్చేవారిగా ఉంచండి ప్రభా మరి మంచి కుటుంబాలు కట్టుకుంటూ దేవా మంచి సంఘాల్లో పిల్లర్స్ గా తండ్రి మా కుటుంబాలు మేము నిలబడటానికి దేవా తద్వారా తండ్రి లోకానికి ప్రభా మరి వెలుగుని నాయన షైన్ చేసేవారిగా ప్రభా మమ్మల్ని దీవించి ఆశీర్వదించమని ఈ సెషన్స్ తీసుకుంటున్నాను నా అక్కని ప్రత్యేకంగా మీ హస్తాలకు అప్పగిస్తున్నాం ప్రభా వారిని బట్టి వరకున్న భారాన్ని బట్టి మీకు ఎంతో వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తా ఉన్నాం ప్రభా మరి ఇక ముందు సెషన్ లో కూడా మీరు తోడుగా ఉండండి మీరే నడిపించండి మాకు కావాల్సిన గైడెన్స్ ని దేవా తండ్రి మీరే దయచేయండి మరి మా హృదయాల్లో ఎన్నో క్వశ్చన్స్ ప్రభా మరి ఆ ఈ బిడ్డలు కున్నాయేమో తండ్రి వారి ఆ ఆన్సర్ వారి క్వశ్చన్స్ అన్నిటికి ఆన్సర్స్ ఈ సెషన్స్ లో దయచేయమని వారికి కావాల్సిన క్లారిఫికేషన్ దయచేయమని దేవా తండ్రి వారికి కావాల్సిన గైడెన్స్ ని మీరు దయచేయమని బిడ్డలందరినీ మీ హస్తాలకు అప్పగించుకుంటూ ముందున్న సెషన్ ని కూడా మీ హస్తాలు అప్పగించుకుంటూ మాకు ఇచ్చిన సమయానికే మీకే వందనాలు చెల్లిస్తూ త్వరలో రానేసే ఉన్నతమైన అతి శ్రేష్టమైన నామం స్థుతించి ప్రార్థిస్తున్నాం తండ్రి and then uncle and auntie can answer them timely thank you have you heard me thanks anna praise lord everybody again uh, let's sing this song which says nee needalo nannu daachumu nee jaadalo saagi podunu um ane paata will sing and glorify god's name um um i put the lyrics in the chat if you would like to sing along um the song um um this song third charanam em cheptadante nee poola mokkanu nee kaanti kiranam naalona padani ne vikasintunu so uh, this knowledge this wisdom that god is enabling us to learn from uncle and auntie is definitely um, a sunrise in the sunset areas of our lives సో ఆయన ఆ లైట్ ని వెద్ద జల్లుతున్నప్పుడు అది తీసుకొని వికసించే ఆ పూల్ గా వి షుడ్ ఆల్ బీ యాజ్ వి లర్న్ మోర్ దేర్ సో వి సో బ్లెస్ టు హ్యావ్ దిస్ అమేజింగ్ సెషన్స్ బికాస్ ఐల్ నాట్ వేస్ ద టైమ్ హౌ ఎవర్ ఓకే నీ నీడలో నన్ను దాచుము నీ జాడలు సాగిపోతును నీ నీడలో నన్ దాచుము నీ జాడలో సాకిపోదును 
నీ పూల మొక్కను నీ కాంతి కిరణం నాలోన పడని వికసింతును నీ పూల మొక్కను నీ కాంతి కిరణం నాలోన పడని వికసింతును భూలోకమున పుష్పించు నీ దయ వేలాది వాసనలు వెదజల్లుదు భూలోకమున పుష్పించు నీ దయ వేలాది వాసనలు వెదజల్లుదు నీ నీడలో నన్ దాచుము నీ జాడలు సాగిపోదు చేదోడు వాదోడు నీ వేగా పాదాల దరి చేరి తీసయా చేదోడు వాదోడు నీ వేగా పాదాల దరి చేరి తీసయా నీదాపు చేరిన మరణం బులేదయా ఆధారం నీ వేగా ఏసయా నీదాపు చేరిన మరణం బులేదయా ఆధారం నీ వేగా ఏసయా నీ నీడలో నన్ను దాచుము నీ జాడలు సాగి స్ట్రగ్లింగ్ వేర్ దై హస్బెండ్స్ అండ్ unable to understand the biblical meaning of the headship because um you know, in indian culture you know the headship is nothing but bossism nothing but bossism in indian culture so um for but the biblical understanding of headship is not that bossism leadership is a servant leadership that's what the bible is talking and what is the submission submission is simply a uh, mean submitting yourself um even though it's not in the uh, god's way or what it may be uh, it contradicts the god's word still you have to submit so there are a lot of things are there you have to understand what is biblical submissiveness okay so in this subject in this in this topic we'll see headship and submission headship and sub we'll share our uh, uh powerpoint headship and submission yeah that is yeah only i think or beta it is it yeah we'll come here uh right um headship and submission that is role in together headship and submission some of the misconceptions in the world is a uh, husband is a master wife is a slave husband is a home minister and uh, so wife is a home minister and a uh, husband is a foreign secretary a manipulator mouse there are a lot of misconceptions and jokes are there in indian uh, culture there are so many jokes on these nowadays i am getting so uh, the jokes on wife and husband uh, on facebook so funny so funny jokes funny to uh, jokes for laughing but it creates lot of I mean misconceptions about this concept of headship and submission these jokes actually it conveys the wrong picture of the headship and submission so headship and submission what what we have to understand uh, headship and uh, submission not just in the um, uh, framework of the new testament we we'll, we have to see the entire context of the bible the old testament so we'll see it in three different ways one is uh, what is the three phases. Uh, th- three phases okay the first phase is before curse before curse what was man's role and what was the woman's role that is headship and submission how we have to understand the concept of headship, uh, headship before the 
course and what, how we have to understand the uh, concept of submission before the curse that's the first and the second one is after the curse entered after the sin entered into the world how these roles were manipulated by the satan and the third one is after the curse was lifted up by jesus on the cross how these roles were given a new dimension according to the paul on ephesians 5th chapter we will see these three different stages okay the first the number one is let us see the man's role before the curse that means man's as a as a uh, headship before the curse you know, if you see the genesis 2 uh, second chapters 15 and 16 verses there are three things are there first thing man asked the man he put him on the 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 so in the garden of eden to work first thing to work okay so before this one the career and moral responsibility the first one is actually man is a breadwinner he has to work people some people thought the work entered after the curse no before the curse there was work but that work was enjoyable god was a worker before god revealed himself as a uh, savior or uh, 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 a savior to be worshipped he work, was revealed himself as a worker he's a worker so before the marriage god gave the adam to work in the eden garden of eden so man was a worker first thing he is a breadwinner he has to work he is a breadwinner so boys listen to me you the, the primary breadwinner of course the wife also will work can work no problem but the primary breadwinner must be the husband must be the husband according to the genesis uh, second chapter uh, 15 and 16 you can see so man has to work first thing the second one is god put adam in the garden of eden to nurture not only to nurture to take care verse 15 to take care to nurture to nurture that means if you um, imagine the home as a garden of eden the wife and the children are the fruits and the flowers in the garden but what's the husband's role husband is a watchman husband is a watchman caretaker the watchman, he will guard the garden. The watchman, he will open the gates for the water and the fertilizers. If any animal, yeah, any cattle, if they come in and destroy the thing, he will immediately close the gates. Okay, that means he's nurturing, he's, he's guarding the family. Nurture. The third one is, so God said you can eat anything, but uh, please take care, don't eat that fruit. That, 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 that will give knowledge, uh, knowledge of good and evil. So don't eat that one. If you eat that one, you will die. That means, this moral responsibility not to sin is given to the man. In the home that means as man as husband your primary responsibility the headship is take care that your wife and the children they will not go against the command of the word of god that means that's your moral responsibility <coughs> though the woman she ate the fruit and given it to the husband but the lord he take all uh, Oh, hold of the the responsibility to the man adam adam where are you that means that he questioned adam not the eve because the moral responsibility is given to man so the first one is you are a worker before curse entered second thing you are a, you are a, a caretaker nurture you are a watchman and the third one is you you have the moral responsibility so that your family will not go against the law or the uh, command of the word of God. 
So that's the before curse. That was the headship understanding. You know, when we see Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, I am now talking about the wife's role before sin entered the world. It says in Genesis 2, 18, The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So, the primary role why God created the woman, that is Eve, was uh, to be an helper, to be an helpmeet, that is partnership or friendship with the man Adam. That was the primary purpose or reason that God created a helper or a helpmeet. Now see, this word helper comes from the Hebrew word uh, paraclete, paraclete, P-A-R-A-K-L-E-T-E. -E. This word paraclete means one who stands alongside. And this word, same word paraclete has been used to the Holy Spirit God. After Jesus Christ was ascend, as he ascended into heaven and the Holy Spirit came down, he was a paraclete to us. He walks alongside us. Now the same meaning word has been used to the woman when God created the woman and sent her into the life of the man. We are called to be helpers or helpful. And it says here, suit, helpers suitable for him. That means what all a man requires, God put those qualities in the woman and he said, now go and you know, make life or marry or live with the man. See, it says here, helper suitable for him, a compliment, like we were kept on telling from last week. Someone who completes, a completer, to complete what is incomplete. Last week we told the man completes the woman, the woman completes the man. And we acted out and we showed also. So man is totally an incomplete person, vice versa, without the wife as the completer or without the husband as a complete. Now caution here, we are called to complete but not to compete. This is coming again and again, girls, guys and guys and girls, we are called to complete, not to compete. Nowadays, marriages have become a competition. We are not complementing each other. We are not completing each other. The moment we see uh, no, a weakness or a laguna in, in, the, in our spouse, we become competitors. We, do, we are not becoming completers. So be very careful. The Spirit of the Lord is bringing this statement again and again from the first session. We are called to complete but not to compete. If any of you is in the spirit of competition, please ask the Holy Spirit God and seek His help to work in this area before you get into the, the, the marriage. So girls, just I want to give you a, a caution here. Maybe you are more um, capable or educated um, and in uh, gifts wide and um, abilities wide, you, you may be more. That's the time Satan will tempt you to take the leadership from your husband. It's a very dangerous thing. This is one of the subtle way of Satan's work. So though you are more capable in leadership and other things than your husband, but never, never dare to take the headship from your husband. So that's a very dangerous thing. So it's not God honoring. In that way, you can encourage your husband's headship, but don't take, grab it from him. Okay, this is the first, before curse, the man's responsibility and the woman's responsibility. That means the man's uh, understanding the headship from uh, before curse and uh, uh, submission before curse. So now you will see the uh, after curse, what happened. Genesis 3, uh, 16, B to 19. If you see Genesis 3, 16, B to 19. Uh, just read it. I, I'll just read it. Yeah. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. Very With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it and all uh, food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the feet by the 
by the sweat of your brow you will eat food until you return to the ground since from it you were taken for dust you are and to dust you will return yeah two things happened after the curse was that first thing man was dominated by work he became more colic step in what what is what god said to abraham adam so adam you have to sweat to eat you have to sweat there are no thistles there are no bushes thorns before the curse but because of the sin the the land of the of the the land also cursed and uh, we see uh, that brought thorns and thistles and so many things the, first the man has to clear the thing to work and eat that means before marriage the work was enjoyable but after the marriage the work so, so i'm very sorry before the curse is i'm, I'm so uh, been been uh, uh, excited about the marriage okay sorry so before the curse work was enjoyable but after the curse work became been sweat curse the was the first one man was dominated by work the second thing man was dominating his wife i will tell you how where is it where it is in this uh, uh, genesis 3 16 to 19 16 the last, 16, the last part your desire for your husband will your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you do you know what is rule over you there it is in the in the hebrew bible the meaning is not ruling is about the dominating that means you will dominate your husband, wife you will suppress your wife you will take over you will dominate your wife see this headship was said under the curse here the ruling is under the curse that means it is dominating but the sad thing is many husbands in many families especially in indian culture we i saw we saw dominating husbands we saw even the churches dominating pastors over their wives the problem is their part their practicing the headship under the curse not under at the cross okay so two things happened before the curse before after the curse man was dominated by work and he started dominating his wife you know when we see genesis chapter 3 verse 16 one sec yeah to the woman he said i will make your pains in child bearing very severe with painful labor you will give birth to children your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you so after curse after sin entered the world even the woman's role also the purpose for which god created woman also got perverted and uh, we see that the there were two things that affected the you no know, the role of a woman after the sin entered the world first thing is child bearing giving birth there was child bearing even before the sin entered but maybe that have that would have been uh, no labor pains but because sin entered into the world the child labor the child thing became were accompanied with labor pains so giving birth to children you no know, domestic chores domestic responsibilities has become a drudgery now for the women they don't like to give birth to children i know of so many girls that they don't want to give birth to children they won't want to become mothers because they feel it will not disturb their career or it will they spoil their physical structure i know so many so many girls they don't want to become mothers i'll simply laugh at those girls you know one thing girls we need to remember that god has given us a privilege to partner with him in the creation extension of his creation it is not that he couldn't fill the earth with the earth with people just with one word a god who could you no know, create bring into existence this beautiful creation just with a word can he not fill the earth with people he can do it 
but he is given us the privilege as the woman to be co-creators with him in the expansion and extension of the creation. So please don't take it as a drudgery. Remember girls one thing, our primary identity starts from the home and goes to the workplace. If you think that your identity as the work is at the workplace and if you want to carry that identity into the home, it is not God honoring and it is not God glorifying and you will mess up your marriage. The primary identity for a woman starts in the home and then goes to the office. So don't take it a drum, domestic drudgery. What I say to the, you know, when we speak to couple seminar, I tell to the wives, I tell them what you do at home, you no know, cooking in the kitchen, taking care of your children, you no know, taking care of your husband. This is also an act of worship. When seven days you don't do this and you keep grumbling and no, and you are you feel the dissatisfaction of you no know, with God for making you a woman, and then you go on a Sunday and you lift up your hands and you sing and you do all that in the worship, the Lord says, I don't take delight in this worship. So that's the first thing which it affected the sin. The second one is. Your desire will be for your husband. You know, what is the meaning? The desire, that actual word is, you. the Hebrew word is, Hebrew you will try, the meaning, the meaning is, you will try to manipulate or you will try to control the husband. You see, when after sin entered, when the man was dominated by the work, he came and dominated his wife. And now what the wife turns around and she does? Nothing doing. You cannot dominate me. I will try to manipulate you. I will try to control my husband. And now we see women these days to not to manipulate and to control. They have got so many mighty weapons. It is tears or keeping the man away from his primary need. And that is the sexual needs or not not on a talking terms. These are all the weapons. You no know, girls these days are using to manipulate their husbands. Girls, please. These are all wrong role models. These are all wrong life patterns which are not God honoring and which are not God glorifying. So this is how sin influenced and affected the woman's role also after the curse came. Yeah. Praise God for Christ, for the cross. It has lifted up the curse and it gave a new dimension to the roles of husband and role of the wife, headship and submission. So Galatians 3.13, the curse is taken by the cross and we are redeemed by the blood of Christ. Praise God for that. And 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19, redeemed from empty way of life handed over from our generation. I'm talking to the Indian couples, Indian boys and girls. So we are redeemed from empty way of life handed, empty way of life handed over from our culture, from our parents, from our parents. Yes. about understanding the headship and submission. Maybe you saw your wrong, wrong role models, but we are redeemed from empty way of life handed over from our parents, from our generation to generation. We don't need to carry those wrong life patterns. We don't need to carry our, our cultural wrong patterns. Because Theodore Williams, the great man of God said, we are not cultural Christians. We are kingdom Christians. We are kingdom Christians. In, in Christ, we have blessings. Let us see, let's go to the Ephesians um, chapter 5, 18 B to 22 to 33. If you have Bibles, it's just you can keep, you can you can open it. You can just with the cell phones also. Otherwise, you can Bible also. Uh, you can open it. Oh, so we'll go through it. Let us see. Suddenly, um, after curse, how Christ gave the new dimension to this headship and submission. Paul so beautifully he explained it. So actually, this role and um, before he explained the man of man's headship and woman's submission, he started with actually 18b. There you can see, be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. Be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. Instead of, do not be drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be ye filled with the Spirit. That means, the context of this verse is, be filled with the Holy Spirit, not to operate the gifts, 
but to do your role as husband role as wife headship and submission to do these roles you need spirit filling you need spirit filled life here the spirit filled life is not to operate the gifts not the preaching and teaching and this and that but here the spirit filling is what what the paul is talking is husbands be filled with the holy spirit just to do your headship part wives be filled with the holy spirit so that you may be submissive let us see the man and woman here the paul is talking about the the verses uh, i am reading it from uh, verses 22 verses 22 okay wives submit yourselves to your own husbands as you to do to the lord for the husband is the husband, head of the wife as christ is the head of the church his body of which he is the savior now as the church submits to christ so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything husbands love your wives just as christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with her with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself here is paul is talking about the headship in a new dimension see in the in the old testament that uh, under the curse your husband will rule over you your husband will rule over you that is the headship under the curse in that there is bossism there is no servant leadership in that only bossism only bossism there we can see only hey coffee bring coffee here what paul is talking christ gave himself to operate his headship over the church the fallen church the failing church the church with so many weaknesses here the headship is not ruling here the headship is serving for that he gave himself in that he gave himself that means it's a sacrificial practical love here the headship is not bossism hey coffee no 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 it's giving himself giving himself not only that here the headship is acting in grace acting in not in anger for the last 2000 years christ is showing acting in anger towards acting in grace th towards church f committed sins repeated to sins grace 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 but in the headship under the curse anger anger bossism here grace grace how he showed the grace cleansing the church here the headship is cleansing the church that means demonstrate grace and forgiveness cleansing the church for the last 2000 years christ is operating his headship over the churches acting in grace boys listen to me before you enter into the marriage have this in your mind acting in grace first you have to you have to give yourself to do this for this you need spirit filling sacrificial and practical love and not only that acting in grace acting in grace not only that this cleansing 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 is it not the serving yes is serving under the headship the headship under the curse it was to be served but here it is to serve the son of man came to the world not to be served but to serve 
to give his to, do, to give his life as ransom for many. Nothing but Sami. There the, under the under the curse, the headship was a hey, coffee. Here, do you want coffee, darling? Babe, do you want coffee? But the fourth word, promoting the wives. Here the headship is not suppression. Under the curse, it was suppression. But here, suppressing the wife's talents, suppressing the wife's giftings, suppressing the wife's personality under the curse. But here the headship was promoting the wives. How he promoting? How he promoted his wife? To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Not only that, and to present her to himself as a radiant church. That means he wants to see his church as the best in the world. In that extent, he promoted his wife. He promoted his church. He promoted the church. He gave his life on the cross. He gave his life on the cross. Now we can understand, boys, what is headship? This is kingdom headship. What we saw in our churches, that is the, that is the worldly was headship that was uttered under the curse. Sacrificial, practical, love, acting in grace, promoting the wives and serving the wives. This is headship. What the Bible is speaking in Ephesians chapter 5. Let us see what the wife. You know, after the curse was lifted up, even the the role and the responsibilities of the wife also was redeemed. You no, know, but sad to say, there are many believing wives also who don't want to come under the redeemed role or responsibilities in a marriage. We you know we enjoy living and playing the role that was under the curse. You no, know, but that does not uh, glorify the Lord. And uh, that does not you know, bring blessings into the wife. No, there's only one single verse that has been devoted and another verse also. It says in uh, 22, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. And then in 24, it says, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Now, this word everything here, one thing we need to remember as wives, if your husband is doing anything which is against the word of the Lord or against the will of the Lord, there you don't need to know, uh, show your submission. You can you know, give them your loving advice. And if they are still stubborn, just leave them and let them commit that mistake. I know when they commit the mistake, the wife and the children also suffer alongside. But uh, it is good. Let them learn from their mistakes. So it says, wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord, as you do to the Lord. And it says, and just as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. You know, when we show that as to the Lord, when I'm submissive to the Lord, I express my submission to my Lord in three ways. First thing is, I express by showing my love. All that way that I can show my love to the Lord, I want to show and tell it, Lord, I am submissive to you. I am submissive to you and I submit my love to you. In the same way, when we say we are submissive to our husbands, but when if we, if we are withholding our sacrificial love, unconditional love, I think it is time we need to question our, and introspect our submission. Then the second thing is, if I say that I am submissive to my Lord, I will respect and honor again out of love. I express my love. I respect and honor out of love. In the same way, if I say I am submissive to my husband, I need to respect and honor out of love. You know, women sometimes, you know, uh, our husbands may not be playing the role or living the life, which is Lord, which is easy for us to respect and honor them. But still in that case also the Lord and the word of God commands us respect and honor out of love. You know how you need to respect your husband? How you need to honor our husbands? Like a VIP. You know, no, VIP is not very important person. VIP is 
the the uh, uh, acronyms which I made is V is verbally. I respect and honor my husband verbally. The way I talk to him, the words that I used to him, to use when I know when I'm conversing with him. No, and then and respect and I V I I is intellectually. You know, with all of my knowledge, the world outside is shouting for you know your individuality. Fight for your rights. You don't need to be suppressed. But the word of God says there is dignity and honor for a woman in being submissive to her husband. So with all of my intelligence, I want to, I submit and I respect my husband. Then the last P is physically, physically with all of my body. I will not withhold my body at times when I want to not get even with my husband because the primary need for the man is sex. So what I do is I withhold it so that I can know, uh, I can harass him. That is not God on me. And the last is, when I say I am submissive to my Lord, I will serve the maximum. In the same way, when I say I am submissive to my husband, I will serve out of love and not out of grudge. Not out of grudge. So this is how it has been overturned. So another, I just want to uh, mm -hmm. talk a little more about submissive in the little yeah. later part. Before so that, yeah, husbands, love your wife. That's what we saw. So as Christ also loved the church, what does it mean actually? I'm going to, I, I will we'll dig into uh, the deeper meaning of this. Okay. Um, what does it mean? How does the husband go about loving his wife in such a way? First one is what we saw is a sacrificing love. It's a sacrificing love. Yeah, uh, yeah, one bit. Right. It's a sacrifice. Yeah, it's a sacrificing love. That's what the uh, husband is asked to do. What is the verse 25? First, the husband's love is to parallel Christ's love in its practice and gave himself for her. This means to give all power to another. It is the opposite of selfish. <laughs> it is self less selfless christ was the omnipotent god in flesh yet he gave himself to be crucified because of his love for the church so it's being a god all powerful god he gave himself for what to be crucified for for whom for the church after you and me we are just man but God is asking us, who is our role model? Christ. Follow him. As Christ loved the church. Husbands, love your wife. As Christ, how Christ loved the church. Signature says, scripture does not give any husband the right to abuse his leadership position. Conversely, he has the responsibility of living out the love of Christ toward his wife. Okay. Not only that, the second one is, it's, it's a sacrificing love. The second one is, it's a sanctifying love. That's what I saw, I, I, I shared it. He cleansing, cleansing, cleansing for the last 2000 years to Christ. He is cleansing the church. Husband has the responsibility to help his wife develop personally and spiritually. Promote her. The husband should be spiritual leader and help her become more like Christ. He has to lead his wife. To Christ more than he is with Christ. He should allow her to develop her beauty both outwardly and inwardly. Not just inwardly. Husbands, even outwardly. Many husbands, they neglect the outward beauty of their wives. Because we thought it's not spiritual. No, it is spiritual. Okay, say, so, huh? Decent, dignified beauty I'm talking. Decent, dignified beauty, okay, outside. And husbands should ask themselves this question. Is my wife a better Christian and better person because she is married to me? Wow, what a question. <laughs> if the answer is no, you are not fulfilling your responsibility as a godly husband. So the, all the guys are asking, uncle, we are not married. Yes, sir. We are, you are not married. But I am, I am, explaining to you and preparing you for this sort of husband 
before you enter the barriers. Before you enter the barriers, so take notes. And next, the, the, the first one is, what is the first one? Sacrificing law. The second one is sanctifying law. And the third one is self-considering law. 28 to 30. Ephesians 5th chapter 28 to 30. Another principle of the husband's law is to love his wife as he loves himself. No one has ever hated his own body. If we do anything well, we know how to love ourselves. It is natural to be aware of how we project ourselves and appear to others. Just as we would never embarrass the, or belittle ourselves, we are to have the same attitude toward our wives. How many times have you heard men belittle and uh, denigrate their wives? See, the youngsters now, nowadays in the Facebooks, I saw so many jokes on the wives, so many jokes on the wives, so many jokes. Please, don't be carried away by, by those such sort of jokes on the Facebook and in Instagram. So sometimes you may have the funny jokes, even the married men in your family groups, in your church circle maybe. But how many times have you heard men be little and integrate their wives? Christian husbands should never be guilty of this. We are to be sensitive to our wife's needs and desires just as we are our own. The word nourishes and cherishes give us more light. What is the nourishes and cherishes? These words mean to build up, to strengthen and to tenderly care for. Aha! What a beautiful meaning. Nourishes and cherishes. When you are going to enter the marriage with that wedlock, so that uh, uh, wedding uh, vows to nourish you, to cherish you, very easy to say that I promise I will nourish you, I will cherish you, very easy. But do you know the meaning of these words before you enter the marriage? It is to build up, to strengthen and to tenderly care for. It is like golden rule for marriage. Do unto your wife as you would do unto yourself. As the church and Christ are one, so the husband and wife are one. And the last one is, it's a satisfying law. What is the first one? It's a sacrificing, so, so sanctifying law. And then, what is that? Self-considering. And then, satisfying law. Verses 31 to 33. These three verses conclude the directions to the husbands. What is that? They are a summation of the previous principles. What is that? For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother. That means the marriage union brings satisfaction to the participants. Marriage, like the Christ's union with the church, is a mysterious union. Mysterious union. Marriage brings physical satisfaction as well as emotional satisfaction. Marriage is God's divine vehicle to meet many of the needs of human beings. Where these needs can be met only in the institution of marriage. If you try to meet these notes, needs outside of the institution of marriage, it's a sin. It's a sin. Now, there are also some common misconceptions no, of godly submission. Nowadays, this word submission is highly hated by the girls. They feel, no, why should I be submit, submissive to a man? Girls, listen carefully to what I share with you. I can submit. I can't submit when I disagree with his decision. You know, disagreeing with the decision and no submission are two different things. You know, how many of you know that statement, we agree to disagree. In marriage, there are many times where the scenario comes up where you agree to disagree. Because you are agreeing to disagree doesn't mean that it is going to no, affect your submission. You do it, cannot. Submission like obedience must be unconditional. Otherwise, it would not be submission at all. Second one. Second thing what girls tell is, I will submit to his decision 
but I cannot support it. True godly submission includes a willingness to support. It is passive in submission. Again, I told you, you know, if the decision is anyway contradicting to the word of God, you tell your uh, disagreement and leave it in a no in a uh, friendly way, in a good way. Let him make the final decision. And if he's taking a wrong decision, let him learn from his mistakes. But you don't withdraw your submission. <coughs> Sorry. Isn't it wrong to support a decision that I disagree with? <coughs> Why do you disagree at first? The thing, the thing to, for you to uh, contemplate is why are you disagreeing? You are, are you disagreeing with the decision of his because it is contradicted to the word of God or because it is contradicted to your decision? To your decision. Is it, it is not wrong to have different personal opinions. But we must willingly put them aside for the common good of the family. Since God has appointed the husband to be the head of the family, the role of the head is to make decisions and the role of the supporters is to support. Therefore, the wife's role is to support the decision that has been made while still keeping her personal opinion. The next one, in all spiritual matters, I can disobey my unsaved husband. You know, that is why we say believer marry a believer. Now, suppose two unbelievers get married and then by the grace of the Lord, the wife comes, turns towards the Lord and commits her life to the Lord and the husband is still an unbeliever. Then do, do you need to withdraw your submissive from this unbelieving husband? The Bible does not anyway allow this. But in the spiritual matters, it says, unless his decision is against a clear commandment of God, a wife must submit to her husband's decision. Because your submission, in your submission, there is so much power that you can win over your husband to the Lord through your submission. Now, what is godly submission? To be a true helper, to be a true helper, she must understand his interests, dreams, weaknesses, strengths and struggles. Girl, please try to understand these things. Let us not become selfish. Let us not just cling on to our interests, to our dreams and no, always take you no know, delight and pleasure or take it as a, you know, as, a, as a weapon, our weaknesses to use it to manipulate our husband or now our strengths, our struggles. Let us be accommodative even of our spouse's interests, dreams, weakness, strengths and struggles because we are called to complement, not to compete. This can be achieved when there is good communication between husband and wife. Please keep your communication good. And one, I want to give one tip to have a good communication in marriage. If you are a believer and a child of God, try to first work on your communication with your Lord, the lover of your soul. Then let your communication between to your spouse flow from there. Then it will be a communication which is healthy and which is God honoring, which is building up your spouse. Only then can she be a loyal supporter, discussing matters intelligently, giving useful feedback and advice, encouraging and helping and praying for him. Suitable helper. Suitable helper in all of these things. According to Ephesians 5, submission is the divine calling of a wife to honor and affirm her husband's leadership and help carry it through according to her gifts. Remember, it's a divine calling. Don't think by being submissive, you become a doormat or you become a second class citizenship which the world out is not trying to convince the woman. But it is no, it is not that. It is a divine calling. And there is dignity and honor in it. It's the disposition to follow her, hus her husband's authority and inclination to yield to his leadership. However, submission does not follow her husband into sin. If your husband is walking on the pathway of sin, there you don't need to be submissive and walk with him into the pathway of sin. 
why submit even among the three co-equal persons of the holy trinity that is god the father is the head through god the son and though god the son and the, and god the holy spirit are equal in every way to god the father they willingly submit to the headship of god the father for the proper for the perfect functioning of the holy trinity perfect functioning of the holy trinity there needs to be submissive therefore a wife's submission to her husband as to the lord that is in obedience to the creator's plan of his creation and not because she is inferior in any way don't mm -hmm. girls don't think because i'm inferior so that is why i'm submitting i'm submitting no that is your dignity and your divine calling that's your divine calling what submission is not we find it in first peter 3 1 to 6 submission does not mean agreeing with everything your husband says first one second one is submission does not mean leaving your brain or your will at the wedding altar you don't leave the brain and your will at the wedding altar you come with your brain with your will and with all of that you know want to submit to it submission does not mean avoiding every effort to change the husband no that's not me you with the holy spirit's help you can do but i say the best part and the most godly thing is entering into the marriage i want to change myself that is easy because i have the willpower to change myself i don't have the willpower and the responsibility to change vasan that is the holy spirit god's work i cannot do Submission does not mean putting the will of the husband before the will of Christ. The will of Christ still stands the primary, the priority. Submission does not mean that a wife gets her personal spiritual strength primarily through her husband. No. So again, we each of us individually tap on to the resources of God the Father. Submission does not mean that wife is to act out of fear no it's not drudgery it's not fear there is freedom in that submission submission is free not coerced by fear submission is free not coerced by fear guys please remember don't try to threaten to get submissive let it come from the willing heart loving heart the christian woman is a free woman when she submits to her husband whether he is a believer or an unbeliever she does it in freedom not out of fear we just want to know act out one thing about this submission and headship it will just you know put an impression on you yeah last time you okay yeah last time we acted out uh, for leaving uh, leaving cleaving becoming one flesh but now this umbrella is not for that this umbrella is for the headship and submission this uh, umbrella it resembles the husband's headship over the wife okay i don't know why god put it into the man's hand we don't know but we have to accept it okay right so this headship wife was under this and uh, wife is under this headship propose pranita as wife she is under my headship. In many families, actually, what happened? No, there is a fight between wife and husband for headship. They are struggling for each other. They are struggling for each other. So in many families, they are struggling for each other to pull it out from each other's hand. You know, this happens when the wife is more talented and no more capable, mm. has more wisdom, knowledge. In that families, mm. this is a big temptation to the wife mm. you not know, to grab this headship into her hands. Yeah. Girls Some, don't do it. Yeah. Sometimes when husband saw that wife is more capable than him, immediately what he will do, he will simply hand it over to the wife and he will simply he is doing his uh, 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 ex external foreign secretary, external affairs only. See, boys, listen to me carefully. Even though you are leaving your home physically for some other country, for some other country, 
Don't leave this headship at home with your wife. Take it to, from there you have to operate it. From there, if you are in your Australia, if your wife is in India, from Australia you have to operate it. But don't leave it. Don't leave it. That's not godly. That's not the word says. Okay. Sometimes under this headship, what the husbands will do, the moment they saw the wife is more capable, more, more talented and more gifted, immediately they will push the wife's talents and the abilities under his headship. Suppress it. He will suppress it. Rule over you. He will rule over you. Sorry. And I suppressed just now my wife got hurt. So praise God. Nothing happened. Okay. <laughs> okay. See, you are called to hold this. See, Pranitha's both hands are free. That means as wife, when you submit your husband, your both hands are free. That means what, what the gospel you are sharing to the others, those who come under the headship of Jesus Christ, they are free indeed. This is the gospel you are preaching. The same way, husbands, when you give this nurturing and cherishing headship, what gospel you are giving to the world, those who come under the Christ's headship, they will be cherished, they will be nourished. Protected. They will be protected, promoted. promoted. Acting, receive grace. Sacrifice in love. Right? But the sad thing is, the church is not showing this sort of headship. It's not, this sort of headships are not preached in the churches nowadays. Especially in Indian culture, in the marriage, uh, in the submission also. Not in a I mean balanced way, they are not preaching. So I will share uh, one story and I will close for the, and close it and we will have some question and answer session. This story is about, uh, we actually, myself from Pranitha, we used to take so many seminars uh, for the World Vision Community Families non-Christian families, world vision community families. So in one of the, in 2011, in one of the uh, seminar, uh, there were 11 couples were there. Out of 11, only one Christian couple and all the 10 couples were Hindus. So normally what we do, myself and Pranita, before we start our um, seminar, non-Christians, yeah, before uh, we start our seminar, we ask the husband and wife to introduce each, each other uh, by saying like this. First wife or husband has to tell the wife's name and he has to tell one positive point that he likes in her most. Next the wife will share, uh, the, the wife will tell the husband's name and she will tell one positive point about her husband. That's what the way we are normally we are introducing the couples. Right. All the 10 couples are over, non-Christian couples. But I saw this uh, Christian couple, he was 84 years old and the wife was around 80 years old. She was uh, uh, brought in a uh, wheelchair because her whole body was paralyzed. Only the sticky bony skin was there. And uh, um, even the words, even the, um, she almost, she lost her speech also. Very, very, very low speech she has. So I thought what they will tell, I didn't give the mic to the, that couple, that Christian couple, immediately that, that husband, the old man, sir, can I have the mic? I felt so ashamed and I gave the mic to him and he said, sir, the most, um, the, the thing I love is to serve a wife like this. This Couple, they don't have children. They're like, almost they're orphans actually. 
because they accept the Lord, they touch, they take little care of them. This husband is a, uh, a, a watchman actually. So he didn't say anything about how he's serving his wife. He just gave the bike to, to me back. The, the lunch time, the other couple, the, the non-Christian couples, they're, they're telling, Sir, morning he has to clean her, brush her teeth, clean her tongue, and take her to the toilet. He has to wash her. And he has to give her bath. He has to give her the clothing, inner wear and outer wear. And he has to cook. He has to feed. Evening 4 o'clock, he has to take his wife to his workplace because nobody is there to take care of her. So he will make her to lie on the cot whole night. He was doing his duty. She was sleeping. Morning again, he has to take her back to the home on a wheelchair. He has to do everything. Everything like a small infant he has to do everything. This happened in 2011. Again, 2012, we had similar the same place again. This time, this is the winter season, January month. Again, this couple came, but this time the 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 the, the similar was an, uh, arranged on uh, a church terrace. Now, this 85 years old now, this man has to carry his wife, and he has to climb the stairs. He has to bring the wife to the uh, upstairs terrace to attend the seminar. So he left his wheelchair there at the stairs. He took her up and he put her on the shoulder. He was climbing. I saw how he was gasping. <sighs> so he climbed the stairs. He didn't, he can sit back side actually, but he was walking. And he sat just before my uh, table. He put his wife on the one chair. Because they are very poor. They have only one blanket to cover. So he removed his blanket. And he covered his wife. The blanket. This old man. He's taking all the, the chilled weather. He was listening and he was shivering. The same time. Actually, I'm talking about the five law ways. The talking is the talking is about the talking is uh, the, the talk is about the acts of service. He was listening for every five minutes. He was looking at his wife because if this blanket, if it falls, she cannot take it back. Every five minutes, he's taking the back blanket to her and cover her, listening, shivering. At one time, I stopped looking at him because I was broken. He was demonstrating how Christ was so the church. He was demonstrating that gospel. Among the non-Christian couples. After one year again, the same thing, the same similar again happened in the same place. This time I, I couldn't see that couple. I asked that people, Ma, where is that couple? Sir, where is that couple? They said, Sir, during the Christmas season, she passed away. And one man said, Sir, that man, he showed us in our community how the husband should love his wife. I'll tell you, this man's name is actually, they changed his name after his conversion to Christianity. His name is Joseph. This Joseph never preached the gospel, but he lived the gospel among the, in his community, the headship of the Christ. Guys, listen to me once again. This is the headship you are called to do. The All the wrong pictures, wrong baggages about the headship, remove it. Let the grace of Christ, let the cross of Christ will remove it. Enter into the marriage. A sanctifying headship. A serving headship. Not self-seeking. 
headship. Girls listen to me. Submission. It's not a second class citizenship. By submitting your husband, you are proclaiming the gospel that those who come under the headship of Christ, they are free indeed. So hope you got the message. Now we'll just we'll come back to screen and we'll uh, yeah the screen is already uh, almost over I think just we'll just we'll check it once again and uh, we will yeah we'll close this with, the, uh, with this thing and uh, um, if you have any questions about this headship and submission first 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 I will first I will we will pray. And we will, then we will, uh, go, any questions you have, we will answer it. First, let us close our eyes and submit ourselves and commit ourselves. Lord, Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Jesus, for the headship, Lord. You are showing, you are operating. Or the church. Lord, I commit myself as future husband, as would be husband, I will commit to this headship, Father. Not the bossism, not the suppression, oppression. But the Lord, a headship which nourishes and cherishes, which proclaims the gospel. Which proclaims the gospel for Christ never suppressed the church. He promoted the church. Lord. Yes, Lord, I commit myself, Father. Not to suppress my would-be wife. But to promote her father with your likeness. The same way, Lord, as a would be husband, wife, father, may my submission be a willing, honoring. Loving may my submission, Lord, we proclaim the gospel. Those who come under the headship of the Christ, they will be cherished, protected, nourished. Lord, with this principle, Father, I will enter into the marriage. Remove all the wrong baggages from my family of origin, Father. Father God, we commit ourselves once again, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. At the cross, Lord, you operated the headship. Acting in grace. Thank you, Lord. Promoting us. Thank you, Lord. Practical sacrificial love. Thank you, Lord. Serving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the church submitting to the Christ, treating as VIP, honoring husband verbally, intellectually, and physically. Service, Lord, change our perspectives, Father. Cleanse our perspectives, Father. Oh, Lord. Cleanse us once again. Cleanse us once again, Father. 
in Jesus name we pray amen amen Oh, over to Ravi. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Auntie, um, for giving us a <clears throat> action items. Basically, it's a responsibility uh, that each of us has to take biblically before proceeding on to the next steps. So, thank you uh, for enlightening us with very important points today. And we must, I think, meditate more on this to gain more understanding and live accordingly, right? So I think it's a responsibility. I will send the, I will, I will send the notes, Ravi. Thank I will you, send Andrew. the yeah. notes. Yeah. For Daniel, I will send it to you directly. Don't worry. Susan and Daniel, I will send it to you directly. Okay. Okay. Run, okay. Run on. The move down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks again. Um, we have already shared the numbers of uncle and auntie in our, in our chat. And if you have any personal questions that you want more information about that you want to personally ask, please reach out to Uncle and Auntie. They are, they'll be happy to answer your questions biblically. Uh, anything about marriage and whatever topics we discussed. So if you if you any of any of you have any questions, uh, do you want to ask now? Please feel free. Uh, I think we still have three more minutes left. We can uh, take a couple of questions and then we can close this. Work a question already chat la on the ka such as yeah, yeah, yeah. there's one question here. There's a question here that Indian yeah. women they give birth after the delivery, they go back to India and stay there for many months. Uh for many months leaving the husband that sometimes stretches to a year. What is your biblical response to such an arrangement? Is it biblical? Mm -hmm. I say it is not biblical. For my second delivery, though living in India, I didn't go back. I didn't go home. I had my delivery in my own home. And uh, my mother-in-law, she came and she helped me. I didn't go. I didn't go. And then not only, so, so suppose you may say, auntie, that culture is separate. My daughter-in-law, this culture I'm talking of, my daughter-in-law, when she was giving birth to her son, uh, to our grandson, they live in Mumbai. They live in Mumbai. Both her parents are doctors, but she didn't, they live in Bangalore, but she didn't want to go to Bangalore just because she has to leave her husband for so many days. She stayed in Mumbai only and her mother came and helped for one month and he went and helped her for one month. So, I say if you really love your husband, you cannot stay away so, so many days. You cannot stay away so many days. But in some, in some cases mm. where the delivery was very complicated and you are not able to manage on your own and you need some help, elderly help, that cases I can say, but for one year, I mm. don't know. If it for with no problem, you want to stay away for one year a day, uh, I think you have to interest with how you are the loving husband. <laughs> not, not only that, actually, the problem with your, many of the Indian girls, especially the South Indian girls, especially Andhra, I'm talking. Okay. Um, the problem with the Andhra girls and our Telangana also, of course, maybe, uh, the problem with them is uh, they have one day function in the uh, uh, their family, uh, parents' family, they will go 15 days before, they will come after 15 days of the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> so that that, 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 that means um, the problem is actually for men, actually, I told you, know, they're physically oriented. Well, most of their physical needs and so many needs are not met. Um, that one year is too long. Too long. So if it is possible, I encourage have it with your husband and uh, if the husband say the even indian boys also they're so cunning actually i know <laughs> I, i'll tell you not cunning i'm talking but they said clever. so uh, clever uh, what they say what they will do so simply they will send the girl to their mother's house or parents house so that we can avoid the uh, expenses of the delivery <laughs> so in indian culture no, what this in, no. in indian culture actually what the boys thinking is first delivery is parents responsibility the second also parents maybe okay i will do like that even indian boys also they have to change their mindset mindset actually okay so better to have it with the husband if the husband is also okay for that and then uh, um, get some help from the parents and uh, um, after one or two months, it's okay, but not the one year. I saw many couples, many young girls. One year, even after delivery, one year. That's not good, actually. That's not good. That means um, that means the, uh, the the umbilical cord is not cleanly 
mean uh, cut off actually umbilical cord um i have a question uncle auntie um what do you have to say for men who are looking for submissive wives but that's before marriage like because the bible doesn't say to be submissive to your fiance or anything like that so do you think as women we need to show those submissive qualities before marriage just so that the guy can recognize that we are women who can be submissive in the future or uh, like do we leave that to the marriage and let god decide or change it later so if you are into a serious dating or a courtship relationship we have to work on the submissive act you know why are you in the relationship is because you want to seriously you are thinking about marriage and you want to enter into marriage and uh, if uh, you are struggling with the submissive attitude before the marriage you will struggle even after marriage right okay Because that, that if, you are, if you are into serious, uh, serious yes. that is why you are yeah. in the courtship relationship. Mm. And if, mm -hmm. if we are not working on our responsibilities, the same thing will carry into the life. Yeah, but not isn't not my relationship with the Lord, uh, if I have a good proper relationship with the Lord, does it not show that I'm already submitted to the Lord so I will be able to submit to the husband in the future? No, no. Submissions. Many times there are many girls who are submissive to the Lord, but not submissive to the husband. They struggle right. with that. Yeah, actually, uh, actually, that submission I will not agree. Submission to the Lord and not submitting to the husband is not submission to the Lord. Yeah, that's danger. Ah, that's danger. It's, it's one of the Satan's uh, uh, when what is cunningness, yeah, this yeah, deception, yeah. subtle way of uh, taking away from that concept of submission. So if I submit to, if if I see husband's love your. I, 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 so an example, as unto the Lord. That means, that means, if you submit to the Lord, you will submit to your husband. It is in the same way. If I if I love my Lord, that's what husbands love your love your wives as Christ loved the church. That means he is the role model. Church is the role model for wife. Church is the role model for wife. So mm. if I say I am submitting to the Lord, not to the husband, not my uh, yeah. We have to introspect. Introspect. How? What is your uh, understanding of submission of the Lord is totally uh, what is that? Um, wrong, wrong way of the uh, wrong concept. Actually, you know, in a dating or a courtship relationship, if you're having problem with submissiveness, I say if there is. I told you all in when I was teaching on the submissive submissive aspect, I was telling. if there is any submissive demanded to something which is against the will of the lord there you say no but if it is in line with the will of the lord which is god honoring you have to submit if you don't do that before marriage you cannot do that after marriage you will struggle right thank you mm, welcome for example for example let me let me ask you uh, uh, maria susan um before um uh, just after our, we, our date was fixed the marriage date was fixed i um what are the things i don't like in pranita uh some, some things i i i mm. i wishing that, that she should be changed um that she should be changed in some of the things some of the things maybe dressing maybe whatever at it maybe mm. she submitted before my marriage mm. she mm. submitted i said so this this sort of dressing is not good go try stone ring no the, the dressing is very modesty but thing but still i i i suggested some of the things so i don't like this you know, i don't like this this thing this. so she submitted right so after that what happened no after that i i saw a submission by love for her become more and more more and more and more and more and i gave permission to wear that dress <laughs> after some time <laughs> it's all it's all what what, I, what i'm telling is submission begins intertwined yeah yeah so do you think it should be vice versa as well not the like you know man submitting but you know just to me, uh, see 
the qualities yeah. in the man before the marriage just so that yeah. I, I can see that so he'll be the husband. In Ephesians chapter 21, what the Paul says, submit to each other. Mm. Submit to each other. He starts like that. And then wife for wife, it give a special command. It's not a, uh, or the principle, it's a command. Wife, submit your husband. It's a command, okay? So, but yeah. before that, this submission part is for both actually. In mm. Christ, submit to each other. Before that, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That the Spirit will help. That Spirit filling is help you to submit to each other. And that Spirit filling is more help you to be a loving husband, to be a submissive wife. So one thing I want to add here, both to the guys and to the girls, uh, we taught you all in the second session about headship and submission. I tell the guys, if you give the headship that we shared just now, Christ-like headship, I think no girl can struggle to submit. Mm. Now to the girls, even after the guy is giving you a Christ-like headship and you are struggling to submit, I say take time, introspect, set yourself right and then enter into marriage. Then there's one more question here. Often we see that mother-in-laws come and stay with the couples for many months. Bible clearly talks about how man has to leave his father and mother and shall live with his wife. How long is too long for in-laws to live with the couples? What's your understanding and what's the biblical response? Thank what's biblical. No, the leaving in the Bible talks about, like we told last week, uh, the leaving that the Bible talks about um the leaving that the bible talks about is primary about emotional leaving emotional leaving means again here i want to clarify one thing after marriage you don't push out your parents geographically if they are dependent on you if they are physically depend physically or financially depend on your due and they cannot live on your own i feel it is a privilege a blessing to the children to take care of them because what i say is one thing is uh, when we were small, when we were toddlers, when we were small, we were completely dependent on our parents and they took care of us till we became independent individuals. So if they have now come to a stage, again, old age is like childhood. If they have come to a stage where they cannot take care of them either physically or financially, and if you keep them with them, keep them with you and you take care, it's a blessing for you. Now here again, I want to add a caution. If the mother-in-law stays on and if she's adjustable and lovingly taking care this different thing but if the mother-in-law is causing friction between the spouses then there i say you need to be wise in creating your boundaries now how long is too long for in-laws to live with the couples that you both have to decide again i tell you if they are loving in-laws and no and if they cannot they have no means to stay separately now i'll tell you from my own life example now both of us are into full-time ministry we both are doing ministry and that is how we support ourselves so if i go away before my husband i feel my husband will not have a problem but if my husband departs before me i cannot live alone because i will have i will have no earning i cannot move on my own that is what i think or so at that time if i still sep live separately telling that i want to live separately with a different house and my own setup I feel that will be a financial burden on my children. So in that case, if my children want to keep me with them, then that is not a problem with, for, for me. But when I start living with my children, it will mostly be my son's family because my daughter is out of the country. If I live, I need to be a wise and responsible mother and mother-in-law. So this leaving aspect in the word, it first talks about emotional leaving. And in some scenarios, we advise even geographical leaving where there is a verbal and emotional abuse and where there is physical abuse. Am I clear? Whoever asked this question, I don't know how far you all are satisfied. If you want any further clarification, you can talk to us personally. Hmm. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah, I have just a quick one, so I've got to go. But um, I was really intrigued. Um, fantastic, by the way. I'm really impressed with the how deep you guys have got into. It's just, 
fantastic. Like you guys need to come to England, man. We need to know more about this. Um, <laughs> land one, question... land one, Dan. Land one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my question is this. Um, I know this period of time has been a big attack on masculinity and things like mm. that. And there's been a lot of bad fathers. I've personally been victim of bad fathers. My parents have as well. Um, but how, how would you encourage a woman who's had a bad father figure to submit to their partner? Because I know that there's relationships where women would struggle to submit. Because, and, and if they see behaviors that you do that may be godly, that their fathers have done, like, for example, if I'm, for example, I'm a preacher, right? I love the Bible. I love learning about the word of God. Let's say their father did the same thing. But because he was a weak man, he showed bad behavior. They'll look at that not as godly behavior, but they'll be like, well, my father did that and look what he did. So I'm not going to submit to you just because you're doing that. I want someone completely different. Like, how would you encourage a woman to submit when they struggle with father issues and things like that? So... <clears throat> no father is perfect no earthly father is perfect actually the earthly father's calling is to represent the heavenly father but fathers are failing so what i say to girls who have come up or grown up under such dysfunctional fathers who could not you know uh, represent the heavenly father i say i know it's not very easy because I didn't live under such a father. I, I cannot fully understand what girls have gone through under a dysfunctional or an abusive father. But I say in such cases, the only one advice I can give is look to your heavenly father. Don't just because your earthly father was a dysfunctional. And if God is giving you a functional and a responsible and a loving caring spouse, don't no, just bank on your dysfunctional father and look at your loving and caring would-be husband from the same lenses. Look at your heavenly father. Look at your heavenly father. He didn't do that with you. He didn't misuse you. He didn't uh, abuse you. He didn't ill-treat you. He didn't hurt you. Our ultimate, I'm telling you always, even in marriage, even in parenting, everything, if we keep man... If we keep man as our role model, we will be dis dissatisfied and we will be you not know, depressed because we are still all in the fallen world. We need to keep our example, our heavenly father and our heaven and our and our heavenly spouse. Then only we can go. Otherwise, we cannot. We cannot because it is difficult again to trust another man. It is difficult to again trust another man. So at that time I say, shift your focus to your heavenly father. Mm. Amen. That's wonderful advice. Thank you. There's one more, one more question come. What role do family and siblings play in choosing a partner? How much involvement should both families have after marriage? I often notice that the man's family tends to be more involved, which creates issues in the marriage what role do family and siblings play in choosing a partner i say if you have a family and siblings who are matured enough who have themselves done the will of the lord in their marriage in their choosing a life partner you can take advice but the ultimate decision is between you and your lord and what the lord speaks to you and the next one is how much involvement should both families have after marriage? How much involvement should both the families have after marriage? What I say is you need to have again that there are a lot of other teachings where we could have even taught uh, where there are still more good topics where uh, after marriage there are four boundaries that you need to know four boundaries that uh, yeah, we told them, if you told you, I think leaving, leaving, last, come, week, last week, last yes, first session. Last yes, yes. Huh? So in that we told the four boundaries, the emotional control, time and financial boundaries. So we need to have those boundaries uh, with the families. So 
involvement i i more than i say more than involvement you can take help and advice from them but not unnecessarily intrusion or involvement that don't encourage and then i often notice that the man's family tends to be more involved which creates issues in the man the man even girl some scenarios it is the girls also we've seen marriages where the girls families also have been involved a lot these days it is like 50 50 i say it is again the responsibility of the man and the woman the wife and the husband how far and how much if it their involvement is causing problems in your marriage in your relationship it is good you try to you know get alert and draw your boundaries and make your boundaries known very clearly i hope i hope that's okay Yep. Um. Yeah, I think we have seventeen minutes past nine. Uh. But thank you so much, Auntie, for your and Uncle. Uh. For taking us the the end of hours of your time and giving us valuable insights of uh how we should prepare. Now I think we can conclude this session now. Um. Any other questions? Please feel to reach out to Uncle and Auntie in New Delhi or to the church so that we can we can try to contact and get your answers. Otherwise, uh, this session uh, will be posted onto the our uh, church YouTube, and we have a link already shared in the uh, chat window. You can you can access it if you don't know. It is named as Telugu Church of Sydney uh, in YouTube, and you can find your find the session part one and part two. Uh, both will be available in YouTube. And once again, we thank Uncle and Auntie uh, for this uh, uh, for your time and give sharing our valuable. insights and serving um, uh, god's true insights to us thank you again um maybe we can close this session with a word of prayer um anybody vinod vinodana um, will you be able to pray and conclude this session ana ravi nan jeymanta va prayer yes ana please 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 <clears throat> all right um let's pray gracious father we come to you in the name of jesus and we thank you lord uh, that you are a god who have instituted lord the institution of marriage and we thank you dear god that you have uh, lord brought um uncle and auntie in our midst to help us and to encourage us in the things that really do matter lord in the in the institute of marriage we thank you dear god that we can learn from godly men and women like auntie and our uncle today and we thank you lord that all the concepts they have uh, clearly explained are biblical and we thank you lord that we had this wonderful opportunity to learn from uh, couples who have lived a christian life and are true examples we thank you lord that we have access to such resources and we thank you lord that you have um, lord um made this possible lord even though we we're all geographically in different places lord it is able because of the advancement in technology and the wisdom that you have given to human kind we thank you lord for their lives and the ministry that they are i uh, into lord encouraging young people to live christian lives lord uh, a life that is christ like um lord where there is a lot of humility and um lord um Lord there's no selfishness oh lord we thank you lord for uh, such amazing people that um, are encouraging the young people uh, lord um, to live lives that are honorable in your sight father i also pray for all those uh, young boys and girls who are lord looking for uh, marriage and their partners i pray to god that in in the days to come that you will bring the right people Lord who will become uh, one in the name of Jesus and Lord who will glorify not just you but the kingdom of God will be glorified we pray to God that people while they're making their decisions Lord they will uh, follow the instructions that we have taught in these two sessions and we pray to God that you will help us a lot to not to forget after this session but Lord use these um Lord wise advice and Lord wise words that we have learned into practice i pray for young people lord that um you will prepare them for marriage lord uh, provide all the resources that they need more importantly lord uh, help them lord to be faithful to one another and faithful to you father 
Lord, we uh, commit, uh, Lord, Uncle and Auntie in your hands, and we pray to you, God, that you'll also abundantly bless their ministry, Lord, so that they can bring the truth to many couples, uh, Lord, or future would-be couples. We thank you again, Lord, for your grace and your mercy that you have shown unto each one of us. Lord, we commit the rest of the um, night, and Lord, um, uh, Lord, we thank you again for all the amazing things that we we have learned. Lord, seal it in our hearts and help us a lot to apply it in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen. Thank you, Vinodana. I think we can close the session now. Thank you so much, Auntie and Uncle. Thank you, Church. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.